So, hello, hello, hello. Let's continue with our discussion. Kasi, di ba, nung title, ano pinag-usapan natin is basically the general provisions of the Revised Corporation Code. Nung title 2, pinag-usapan natin paano pinanganak ang isang corporation which is called incorporation and other necessary uh, necessary details in relation to that. Ngayon, we will talk about Title 3. Ang title ng Title 3 is Board of Directors or Trustees and Officers. So, let's start. Now, itong Board of Directors and Trustees and Officers uh, or Trustees and Officers, basically, sila yung nag-govern. Not na sila nag-govern. Sila yung namamahala. Yun, mas magandang pakinggan na term. Sila yung namamahala sa pagpapatakbo ng isang corporation. Kasi itong mga stockholders, yes, they are the owners, but they indirectly control the management. Uh, not as a management, but they indirectly assume control over the corporation. Kasi ang namamahala talaga is itong mga director, mga trustees, and yung mga officers and agents ng corporation. So with that, uh, start tayo sa section 22. Now, section 22 provides that the board of directors or trustees of a corporation qualification and term. Now, unless otherwise provided in this code daw, the board of directors or trustees shall exercise the corporate powers. Tandaan nyo, corporate powers, ito yung express, implied, and incidental. Di ba? Recap tayo. Conduct all business and control all properties of the corporation. Now, directors shall be elected for a term of one year from, uh, from among the holders of stock registered in the corporation's books while trustees shall be elected for a term not exceeding three years from among the members of the corporation. Kasi di ba? Uh, tag ito. Stockholders for the stock corporations, so board of directors sa kanila, for the non-stock corporations, ang tawag natin is members, di ba? Hindi stockholders but rather members. And kapag mag e sila ng board, ang tawag sa mga members ng board is trustees. Now, each director and trustee shall hold office until the successor is elected and qualified. A director who ceases to own at least one share of ano, stock or, or a trustee who ceases to be a member uh, of the corporation shall cease to be such. Ibig sabihin, kapag itong si director, hindi na siya stockholder kasi wala na siyang pagmamayaring stock eh. So, hindi na siya qualified maging director pa ng stock corporation. On the other hand, ito namang si trustee kapag hindi na siya member. Ibig sabihin, hindi na rin siya qualified para maging trustee ng isang corporation. Now, the board, ito, additional note to, dagdag to sa, ano natin, sa revised corporation code, the board of the following, following corporations vested with public interest shall have independent directors constituting at least 20% of the board. So, ibig sabihin, pag 10, 10, 10 yung tao mo sa board members, at least dalawa doon is independent directors. And ito yung mga ano, companies or corporations na required magkaroon ng independent directors. As you can see here, these are companies that is vested with public interest. Ibig sabihin, napakalaki ng effect nila sa public na kung saan, in order to make sure na they properly follow the rules and regulations, they ma there must be independent directors to oversee na they are following the rules and regulations properly because they are these are uh, corporations vested with public interest that their mere existence sa economy, sa public, sa society has a big effect. Ito, tingnan nyo. Securitization code, commission, o yung mga mal mal malalaking assets. Ito naman, yung mga finance institutions na grabing effect yan and other comes vested with public interest. Like yung mga public utilities, yun. Malaki talaga ang effect nila sa pub. Or na malaki, significant talaga yung effect nila sa public. Hence, the requirement of independent directors. Now, ito, binigay definition ng isang independent director. This is a person daw who, apart from shareholdings and fees received from the corporation, is independent of management and free from any business or other relationships which could or could reasonably be perceived to materially interfere with the exercise of independent judgment in carrying out the responsibilities. Kaya nga, independent ang tawag, di ba? But later on, may mas in-depth ano to siya, definition sa later slides. Kung ano ba talaga or anong mas klarong definition ng isang 
independent director kasi may pinrovide diyan yung ano natin si SEC. Now, independent directors must be elected by the shareholders present or entitled to vote in absentia. Ito na pag-usapan natin uh, absentia. Ah, wala ka pala no? Oo, kasi dati ah uh, ah later pag-usapan rin natin. In absentia, ibig sabihin kahit wala doon siya no, shareholders pwede sila mag-elect ng independent director. True ano, electronic form like ano, video calling etc. Pero later on eh, during the election of directors, independent directors shall subject to rules and regulations governing their qualifications. Disqualifications, voting requirements, duration of term and term limit, maximum number of membership, and other requirements that the commission will prescribe to strengthen their independence and align with international best practices. So ito, salient points and remarks. Basically, itong mga pinagbago ng ating revised corp code as compared to the old corp code which is BP68. Now, inclusion of a provision that at least 20% ng board should be independent directors based with public interest. Ito, nasabi natin. Ito naman yung innovation. Uh, ito, same lang. They must be elected shareholders present or entitled to vote in absentia during the election of the boards. Innovation yan, di ba? Kasi, bested with public, public interest yan eh. Malaking significant yung influence and effect yan sa public. So, gaya na sabi natin, in order to make sure that these companies vested with public interest, na they will properly follow the rules and regulations, lagay mo ng ano dyan, independent director para mag-make sure, para mag-oversee na, oh, itong company to, properly following. Now, corporate powers exercised by the board of directors. Ito na, mensahe natin kanina, na yung express incidental pati ano, implied, may, ira, mayroon yung iba. Governing body of the corporation. Yun yung board of directors or trustee natin. It is well established in corporation law that the corporation can act only to its board of directors in the case of stock corporations and board of trustees kapag non-stock. So long as this is within the scope of its charter. Ano yung charter? Pag ano, pag private corporations yan, articles of incorporation, bylaws, and other relevant provisions of the law. Pero kapag special ano yan, special charter yan, or public corporation, let's say, let's say or corporations vested with, ano, uh, yung mga special laws, yun, yung charter nila, hindi articles of incorporation, but the law, the statute, that created them. Yun yung magiging special charter nila. But for corporations na private, like under the under the gover ano yung tawag dito? Under the under the inf not necessarily influence, but under the govin governing ano, governing code of the ano, of the revised, corpo co revised corporation code of the Philippines, yun, sa kanila, ito yung kanilang charter, articles of incorporation, bylaws, and other ano. Pero pag special, pag ano, created by special law, yung special statute, yun yung magiging charter nila. Recap lang, na-discuss na natin to. Now, the general rule is that in the absence of authority or valid delegation from the board of directors, no person, not even its officer, can validly bind the corporation. Kasi sila yung may control, eh. sila yung may corporate power, sila lang yung pwedeng mag-exercise. So, ang general rule, kapag hindi sila, kung walang valid delegation, kung walang authority nila ng board of directors, ng board of trustees, then it cannot validly bind a corporation. But take note, that is the general rule. May exceptions tayo mamaya. Now, binding effect of stockholders' action. They are not the agents of the corporation and cannot bind it by their acts. They, uh, they have only indirect control of the corporation through their votes. And yung mga actions na pwede lang pagbotohin listed So, wala silang ganun ka-influential na control sa pagpapatakbo ng corporation. Kaya, investors lang sila. Hindi sila yung nagpapatakbo. Investors lang sila. Hindi sila yung nagmamanage. Take note of that. Now, extent of judicial review. Anong mean ito? Court intervention. Anong mga instances or when it comes to the, the, ano, the board exercising its corporate powers, May, pwede bang mag-intervene ang korte? Technically, or generally hindi. As long as the directors or trustee 
act honestly and their acts or contracts do not disregard the rights of the minority, the minority stockholders. The courts will not interfere. So as you can see here, as long as good faith sila sa pagpapatakbo nila ng corpora corporation, hindi, hindi makikialam ang korte dyan. Mangingialam lang ang korte dyan kapag nagkaroon ng bad faith. They are not liable for losses if the cause is merely error in business judgment, not amounting to bad faith, bad faith or negligence. Na, itong negligence, ito, na-discussion na ito sa, ano, eh, sa obligation and contract. So basically, negligence, uh, in layman's term, uh, you should have performed your duties properly. Na kahit ano man nangyari, because of some circumstances outside your ano, influence, masama pa rin yung nangyari. Yun, hindi yung negligence. Ang negligence, kapag wala, hindi mo pinerform maayos ang duty mo. Kaya dahil doon, puk, pak, puk, pak, wala, failure. Negligence yun. Ganun lang, layman's term, di ba? Simple lang yan pag ano yan. Ang pag-describe yan, bad faith, ito. May intent ka na talaga na maging masama or gumawa ng masama. Kaya nga bad faith, ito, para kang lang si, ano, pantamad. Hindi mo ginagawa ng maayos yung trabaho mo. Ito, ginawa mong yung trabaho mo, pero yung ginawa mo, masama. So yan na, general rule, as long as the board, uh, the directors, the trustees, are in good faith in their management of the corporation, na walang negligence, they properly did their duties, hindi mangangailam ang korte dyan. Any corporate act which does not fall under any of the transactions, requiring stockholders or members approval can be carried out by mere board resolution. Kasi di ba, yung kailangan ng votes ng ano, ng stockholders or members, listed naman yan eh. So outside of that, as long as it is not ultra vires, tandaan nyo, ang ultra vires, lumalabas sa board exam, ang ultra vires acts, these are acts that you did beyond what you can do, beyond your authority. Big sabihin, ginawa mo tong mga acts na to, Without authority, wala kang karapatang gawin pero ginawa mo. Not necessarily it is unlawful or illegal. Ang ultra vires acts, ang sinasabi lang yan, may ginawa ka pero wala kang karapatang gawin yun. Yun, ultra vires acts yun. So ito, uh, saan yun tayo? Oh, without proper approval, can be carried out by mere board resolution. Although the activities or transactions involved may span beyond the term of the directors and trustees, and entail obligations to be borne by succeeding board as long as the action was done in good faith and for the best interest of the corporation. Now, ano ang rason? Bakit yung uh, may rule tayo, or vested naman sa batas, na yung exclusive control na sa board of directors or na sa board of trustees? Ito yun. The theory of every corporate organization is that the stockholders may have all the profits but shall turn over to a small and compact body, the board of directors or the board of trustees, pag ano yan, non-stock, the exclusive authority to manage and control the transaction of its business and the use of its asset, the power of stockholders being limited to a few specified matters concerning its internal affairs. So yan. Yan yung nangyayari. Stockholders, invest lang kami dyan. But the power to run the corporation, board of directors. Ganun lang, board of directors, board of trustees. Pag run stock. Now why? Necessary for efficiency. E kung marami yan sila, convulated, convulated, huh? convulated yan, magulo, bureaucratic. Hindi na efficient ang pagpaptakbo ng operations ng corporation kapag marami sila ramin sila. Imagine, yung mga big corporations natin, thousands of thousands of people lang ano yan eh. Ang stockholders, although yung iba, yung marami, minuscule lang, pero stockholders pa rin sila. Na-imagine kung sila yung mag ano, sila yung magpapatakbo, stockholders lang. Ano yung magulo yan. Kaya kailangan, ta kailangan ng isang compact small body para magpatakbo ng corporation. Tawag natin doon, the board. Board of Directors, Board of Trustees. O, parang sa democracy lang yan ng, Pilipi ng, ano, ng isang bansa, di ba? Pag democracy, kaya nga tayo may binobotong gobyerno para yung gobyerno yung magpatakbo. Kasi kung tao magpapatakbo, alam, magulo yan. Anarchy. Bibihira lang yung gumana. E, pag gumana, 
limited form. Like sa Switzerland, meron ganun sila. Like, approval mismo, plebisit ng mga tao. Kung i-approve yung batas o hindi. But on limited issues lang yun. Imagine if that is the general, ano, ay di magulo. Lalo sa Pilipinas, sa away-away yan. Hence, kailangan ng small and compact body necessary for efficiency. Now, take note lang, pagdating sa close corporation, which we've discussed naman, may sarili namang sections tong siya, ano eh, close corporation. The articles of incorporation may provide that the business of a corporation shall be managed by the stockholders of the corporation, eto, rather than by a board of directors. Kasi itong si close corporation, kukunti lang yan ang mga stockholders. Usually, hindi, ah, hindi pa yan, hindi yan sila public. Kasi yung public, marami yan. Pag, pag, pag ano, publicly listed yan sila, alam, marami yan silang stockholders. Pero itong close corporation, from the word itself, it is very close. Kukunti lang yan sila. Oo, kukunti lang yung mga stockholders. Usually, magpapamilya lang yan, eh, magkakamag-anak. O magkakakilala. Sila-sila lang yan. Kaya, since ganun yung setup nila, sabi ng batas, okay, goods. Since, uh, since kukunti lang naman kayo, oh, sure, kahit yung stockholders na yung mamahala. Pero special yan kasi close corporation. Now, if we're, kasi, uh, special yan kasi close corporation. Eh? When the typical corporation is ano, yung pinag-usapan, kailangan mo talaga ng board kasi maraming stockholders. Si close corporation, since yung nature niya is kukunti lang yung stockholders, Goods na, sabi ni Batas, sabi ng Batas, goods na kahit na yung mga stockholders na mismo yung yung mamahala. Bakit? Kasi sila sila naman mag elect ng board of directors, eh, kukunti lang sila, pag-usapan na lang nila. So, by that, na-achieve na nila yung efficiency, kasi kukunti lang sila. Small and compact body lang yan eh. O, yun, special, special note yan si Close Corporation when it comes to this theory. Now, nature of powers ng isang board of directors uh, ng isang board Now the powers of the board of directors and or trustees are in a very important sense original and delegate and delegated basically na to eh mga concepts when it regards to the nature and powers ng board the stockholders and members do not confer nor they can revoke those powers they are derivative only in the sense of being received from the state in the corporation. In other words, to para mas madaling maintindihan, daming ek-ek, di ba? In other words, acts of management pertains to the board. Sila ang mamamahala. Acts of ownership, si stockholders or members. Yun. Management, kay board. Ownership, acts of ownership, kay stockholders or members. Sila may ari, sila nag-invest. Now, in the latter case, yung acts of ownership of stockholders, the board cannot act alone, but must seek approval of the stockholders or members. Yung mga acts of ownership, listed naman yan dito sa batas natin, dito sa Revised Corporation Code. Ano yung mga acts of ownership or acts na kung saan? Yung board lang ang pwedeng gumawa. Ah, board lang po. Na kahit yung board lang, okay na. Ano yung mga na kailangan ng approval ng stockholders? Listed naman yan eh. Kung titingin kayo sa mga reviewers, listed yan. Doon, mas madali nyo pa makita doon. Acts of stockholders. Um, lalo na pagdating yung sa ano, review na for the board exam. Listed naman yan. Ano yung mga acts na kailangan approval ng stockholder members? Ano yung mga acts na kahit yung board of directors na lang? Ano yung mga acts na kailangan both sila mag agree Yun. Now, the other view favors the delegation theory. Ang delegation theory, basically, uh, o oh yan, sa isang ano, democratic country. Yung source of power na sa tao. But since uh, common sense lang talaga na pag yung control na sa tao, aba magulo yung management. Kaya itong mga tao, the people, will delegate the authority to the government. The, oh, ano yan, sa constitution natin, nakalimutan ka lang proper wording. The power eminence from the people. But they delegate it to the government. Government na ang magpapatakbo. But the real power emanates from the people. Ganon yun dito. The ownership emanates from the stockholders. But, i-delegate lang yan sa, man yung management, i-delegate sa board of directors. Hence, the board of directors are the officers and agents of the corporation, representing the interests of the abstract legal entity and those who own or those who own shares of stock 
the stockholders, and as such, they can bind the corporations provided they act within the scope of their authority. Meaning, bawal ang ultra vires. Kung ano lang yung ano nila, delegated authority nila, yun lang yung pwede nilang gawin. Actually, the powers of ano, the Board of Directors trustees are directly conferred by the statute. Oh, mga additional theories lang in regards to the nature ng powers ng ano, board. Conferred by statute and as general rule, the stockholders or members cannot control their access or exercise judgment vested in them by virtue of their office. Once the directors or trustees are ano, elected, the stockholders or members relinquish corporate power to the board. Dinelegate na eh, as provided by law. But take note, certain corporate acts, however, the approval or, or authorization of stockholders or members is necessary for their validity. Ah, may list naman yan eh. So yun lang, napakasimple. Nature and powers ng board of directors. Kailangan yan, delegated authority. The ownership is with the stockholders or the members. But it is delegated to the uh, to, uh, it is delegated to the board of directors, to the board of trustees for proper management. Why? For efficiency. Now, anong, siyempre, ah, uh, tawag dito, too much power, ah, uh, tawag ba too much power corrupts, absolutely, ano yun? Ano yung quote na yun? Too much power, uh, corrupts absolutely, eh, bahala. Basta too much power is bad. Ganun na lang. <laughs> Kalimutan ko yung quote ni. Uh, corrupts abs- absolute power corrupts. Ah, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. Hence kailangan ng limitation sa powers ng board of directors or trustees. Now, these limitations or restrictions are imposed by the constitution, statute, articles of incorporation or bylaws of the corporation. Now, of course, limitations 'yan. It cannot perform constituent acts. That is, acts involving fundamental or major changes in the corporation. Mine, parang ano yun, ha? parang tawag yan, act of, act of dominion, act of ownership na yan eh. So, yung masyadong may significant changes talaga sa corporation, aba, hindi, lang, hindi yan nila basta-basta pwede gawin. Kasi, kailangan na yan ng amendment sa article of incorporation. And kapag kailangan ng amendment, Ala, kailangan mo ng approval or ratification ng Board of Directors. Sir, anong, anong, may tanong ako, sir. Anong approval? Anong ratification in this concept? Ang approval, ganito yan. Ang board may present na changes or amendments. Pipresent nila sa stockholders. Kung nagusta ng stockholders, yun, approval yun. Ang ratification, yung changes, nangyari na. Nangyari na yung changes. So, para ma-validate yun, kailangan ng ratification. No, no? Familiar yung concept? Voidable contract. Balikan yung obliko nyo. Yung concept ng ratification. Yung mali, aayusin. O hindi, ano pa reformation pala yun. Itong ratification, may maling nangyari, pero pinayagan mo na lang. Yun yung ratification. May maling nangyari, natin sa illegal, or you can say illegal, basta may maling nangyari, pero pinayagan mo na lang, yun ratification. So, approval, prinesent sa no, stockholders for their approval. Ang ratification, nangyari na yung changes. Pero since okay lang sa stockholders, para ma-validate yung act na yun, okay, ratification. Lastly, it cannot exercise powers not possessed by the corporation. Ito na yung ano natin eh. Isa na sa mga express, implied, and incidental powers. Fiduciary duty ng board of directors or board of trustees. Now, anong fiduciary duty? Fiduciary class, basically, it is a relationship based on trust. Pinagkatiwala ni stockholder, pinagkatiwala ni member, yung pagpapatakbo ng corporation kay directors, kay trustees. Fiduciary is a relationship based on trust. Kayo ba ng boyfriend mo? Fiduciary ba kayo? May trust ba kayo sa isa't isa? Yeah. So, because this relationship is based on trust, it is the duty of the board of directors na hindi sirain yung trust na binigay sa kanila ng stockholders, ng members. They have the duty not to break those, not 
they have the duty not to break that trust. Kasi once trust is lost, di na yung mababalik. Di na yung mababalik. Di na yung mababalik ng 100%. 80%, 90% sure. Pero 100% trust, di na yung babalik. Required to discharge duties in good faith and with diligence. Para walang bad faith, para walang negligence. Yun, diligent. Yun, na, nalalakot yung word. Opposite of yan, no? Pag nag-negligent ka. Diligence. Inaayos mo trabaho mo. Care and skill. Hence, liable sila if they breach their fiduciary duty. Ibig sabihin, nag-bad faith sila or nag-negligent sila sa kanilang actions. So, yan na. Fiduciary duty. A relationship based on trust. In this case, the board of directors, the board of trustees, hindi dapat nila sirain yung trust na binigay sa kanila ng stockholders, na binigay sa kanila ng members. Powers exercised by board of directors or trustees as a board. Now, the, the, uh, the board of directors or trustees must act together as a body in a lawful... Magka-carpenter man dito. Gabi na. Sarin na ko. In a lawful meeting, not individually or separately. Kaya nga board eh. Dapat... Magano sila mag gather gather, mag meeting meeting. Doon nila pag-usapan in order to bind the corporation by their acts. In other words, for them to exercise their powers, they must meet as directors or trustees and act at a meeting in which there is a quorum. Kapag hindi legal yung meeting, not valid yung pinapagawa nila doon. Wow, gabi na nagko-construction pa. So, sir, anong quorum, sir? Now, itong quorum, sa old corporation code natin, sa BP68, it was discussed in this, ano? It was discussed in this section. But with the revised corporation code, this was discussed in, oo, transfer na siya to section 22, ah, section 22, section 52. Dati, itong quorum, di discuss to dito sa section na to, under sa board of directors. Pero ngayon, Sa device natin, sa section 52 na siya. So, <laughs> so, sa section 52 pa natin siya ma-discuss. But, basically, what is a quorum? A quorum is the minimum number of, ano, minimum number of people required for, uh, para magkaroon ng isang proper meeting. Minimum number of people required para magkaroon ng isang proper and valid meeting. Para kung ano yung mangyari sa meeting na yun, valid kasi yung meeting na yun is legal. Na sir, ilan dapat para magkaroon ng minimum para maging valid yung meeting? In this case, ato, parang ano lang, konting notes lang to kasi section 52 pa ito ma-discuss eh. But ano natin ngayon, yung, yung general idea ni quorum, which is basic lang naman. Let's say for example, there are 10 board of directors. Oh, may sampo. May sampu tayong board of directors. Now, in order for them to constitute a quorum, under this code, kailangan majority. Unless otherwise provided ng bylaws for a bigger number. Oo. Pero pag wala namang provided, enough ng six to constitute a quorum. Pero pag provided sa kanilang, ano, sa kanilang bylaws or sa Articles Incorporation na the quorum for the board shall constitute 70%. So, 70% daw of the board para mag-constitute ng quorum. Pero pag walang ganong ano, walang ganong provisions, majority. So, ang majority ng 10 is 6. So, kapag sa isang meeting, present yung 6 board of directors, goods na, valid yung meeting na yun, proper. Pero kapag hindi sila present, or kung hindi nag ng quorum, Mga lima lang sila, mga apat lang. Then, kung ano man gawin nila sa meeting na yon, wa effect. Wa effect. Bakit? Hindi legal yung meeting eh. So, kung hindi legal yung meeting, yung mga pinagagawa nyo doon, hindi valid. Tandaan nyo, yan yung quorum. Minimum required number of people in a meeting para yung meeting na yon maging valid, maging legal. Bakit yung kailangan? Kasi dapat yung meeting na yon is legal. Kasi pag hindi legal yung meeting na yon Yung mga pinaggagawa niya nila doon, hindi valid. Now, sa ating corporation code, ang quorum 
unless otherwise provided sa kanilang bylaws, sa kanilang articles incorporation, ang quorum shall constitute the majority. So, kapag may 10 boards ka, board of directors, board of trustees, then kailangan 6 to constitute a quorum. Para kung ano man yung gawin nila doon, decisions within that meeting, valid. Now, pag sinabing 80% should be present to constitute a quorum, so pag 10 yung board of directors, then there should be 8. Oo, pero pag silent naman, majority. So, yan lang yung ano, general idea ng isang quorum. Mm, yan yung general idea ng isang quorum. So, section, section 52 pa kasi siya eh. Pero at least ngayon, may idea na kayo kasi from se this section to section 52, i ilang beses yan uulitin yung salitang quorum. So, at least now, alam nyo na yung idea niya. Ano yung concept niya. And this otherwise provided sa sa articles or incorporation or sa kanilang bylaws, etong quorum shall constitute the majority. Okay? So, let's continue. So, there are recognized exceptions to the rule that a corporation cannot act except by authority of the board directors in a meeting duly convinced. Ito, na discuss, ah, na discuss na mention natin kanina. Na mga general rule, general rule, na dapat nandun yung board of directors. Pero mga instances kasi na kahit kukonti sila. Ah, kahit, may mga instances kasi na kahit ano yun? Ah, Na kahit yung board uh, did not meet in a meeting, duly convened, na kahit yung mga acts walang ano, walang authority ng board, nagiging valid pa rin siya later on. Ano yun? Mama, next slides, yun yung mga exceptions to the rule. Ito, reason to the rule muna tayo. The general rule that the directors or trustees can bind the corporation only by action taken at a board meeting seems to rest upon two reasons. So, yun yung general rule. Sa isang valid meeting na kung saan may quorum. Those are only the instances as a general rule, ha? Na kung saan valid yung actions. Tandaan, general rule lang yun. Ito yung dalawang reasons for that rule. A meeting is necessary in order that the uh, that any action may deliberately adopted after opportunity for discussion and interchange of views. Siyempre, kailangan nilang pag-usapan yan eh. Lalo na pag malaking corporation or kahit malit lang man. Mga decisions yan eh sa pag-manage ng corporation. It will affect the corporation. So, kailangan mapag-usapan nila yan properly. Mapagplanuhan. Hindi lang basta-basta nila gagawin. Kaya, kailangan ng meeting. Para sa meeting na yun, doon sila mag-usap-usap. Doon sila mag-agri-agri, mag-boto-boto kung ano yung proper options, proper management na kailangan gawin. Pangalawa, being agents of the corporation, managing its affairs, the directors or trustees have no power to act other than as a board. Mm -hmm. Yung trabaho nila eh. Unlike its officers, yung mga directors are not agents of the corporation per se, per se ah, and have no power acting individually to bind the corporation. Sir, uh, for you, sir, anong difference ng director sa officer? Ang director, they oversee. Oh, the, the board of directors, the directors oversee the management of the corporation. While the officers, on the other hand, they, uh, tag ito, they handle the day-to-day -day operations. Okay, yung difference sila. Board of Directors, they uh, oversee the management of the corporation. Si officers, they handle the day-to-day -day operations, the day-to-day -day activities ng isang corporation. Yun yung major difference silang dalawa. Tawag dun? Ito na, exception to the rule. Diba yung general rule, the corporation can only be bind by an act taken by the board of directors under its authority in a valid meeting. That is the general rule para magbind yung corporation to the act. Ha? Ito, ito yung mga dinisas natin, diba? Valid uh, legal meeting, may quorum, and tawag ito, para maging valid yung acts nila, yan yung general rule. Ito naman yung exceptions to the rule. Dami nila. Oh, dami nila. Sampu nila. Like ito. 
Kapag isa lang yung stockholder, <laughs> oo, bakit pa mag-meeting siya na lang mag-isa eh? One person corporation yan. Kapag isa lang yung stockholder, eh di isa lang yung director, ah, uh, director, yun air quotes, director, kasi siya lang mag-isa eh, ano yun? Loko-loko mag-meeting sa sarili niya. O, oh, binding na yun, kasi siya lang mag-isa eh. Ito naman. Contract entered into by the general manager. Ito, general manager. So, general manager, may idea naman kayo, di ba? Parang siya talaga yung namamahala ng day-to-day operations. Like, on hand ba? Di ba? Authorized by the door. Kapag authorized naman yung general manager by the boards, whether implied or expressly, it can bind the contract, mm-hmm, the corporation. But take note, bawal ang ultra virus. Dapat, we didn't need authority lang yung kanyang pineperform na acts. Uh, Bound by particular transaction, ito. Kapag may nagkaroon ng isang ano, yung example, yung corporation, some of its agents, some of its officers, or one of its board, pinasok yung corporation sa isang contract nang walang authority ng board, automatic ba na, na void yung contract na yun? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi at a subsequent board meeting, pwede yun ma-ratify. Oo. Pwede yun ma-ratify na, ah, sige, agree na lang kami dyan. So, ito. Yun yung SNC ratification. Na una na yung action, yung pag-validate sa kanya later on pa. Yun yung essence ng isang ratification. Na una na yung event, na una na yung actions, yung pag-validate sa event na yun, later on pa. Subsequent. So, yun. Ito, corpus lack by a director, so, oh, possessing acts, o, oh, basahin nyo lang to, etc., etc., etc. Ito yung mga, eh, basta take nota, extraordinary situations. Now, power of directors or trustees to delegate authority. Now, yung general rule tayo meron ngayon, in the absence of authority from the board of directors, no person, not even its officers, can validly bind a corporation. Pero alam naman natin, uh, mm. na may mga instances na pwede. Pero general rule din yan. As a general rule, may exceptions. At yung exception, na-mention naman yan dito. Sa exceptions rin na to. Kasi magkaka-interrelated lang mga topic niyan eh. The power to bind a corporation by contract rests in its board of directors to trust this, but the power may be delegated. Pwede mong ipasa na siya na lang yung gagawa. Either express you imply the two other officers or agents ng isang corporation appointed by it. Mini uh, example ministerial duties. 'Yun. Sir, anong meaning ng isang ministerial duty, sir? Curious lang ako. Natiyatamad ako mag-Google, sir. Eh. So, sa tingin niya, anong meaning ng ministerial duty, sir? Basically, ang ministerial duties kasi is parang SOP na 'yan. Yung ginagawa mong pine-perform mo, SOP na. Standard, may standard procedure na. Oo. Opposite yan discretionary power. Sa so dis- discretionary power kasi, may choice ka. Nagawin to, gawin to, hindi gawin yan. Yun. Ang ministerial duties, wala kang choice. Mayroon ka ng set of procedures na, ka- na kailangan gawin. Like for example, uh, nasa purchasing department ka. So ang ginagawa mo lang dun, purchase, 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 purchase. Yung discretionary ng kung anong ipapurchase, wala sa'yo. Uh, nasa ibang department o nasa ibang tao. Ang inaano mo lang, uh, mag-record, record, record lang. Yun, ministerial duty yun. May pro- standard procedure ng gagawin. I-follow mo na lang. Wala kang discretion kung ano yung gagawin mo. Yun, yun yung ano, meaning ng isang ministerial duties. Ito, number of directors or trustees. Uh, for the board of directors, not more than 15. For board of trustees, pwede lang pas 15. Provided naman sa ano eh, provision. Now, dati, dati sa old code, minimum 5, maximum 15. Dati. Kasi, di ba, minimum of 5 incorporators yun ang pwede. Ang sa old code, minimum 5 incorporators. Kaya minimum of 5 yan. Now, ngayon, pansin nyo, walang minimum. Big sabihin, kahit isa pwede. Bakit pwede kahit isa? Kasi meron na tayong one-person corporation. Pwede na yan. Kahit isang board of, di- kahit isang director lang, isang trustees lang. Ang nagka-change na lang, 
For the board of directors, not more than 15. Pero sa trustees, pwede 15. Unless otherwise provided sa code, ito ang follow Ito, qualifications. Sino yung mga qualified or pwede maging member ng board? For stock corporations, ito. Every director, including incorporating director, dapat may isang share sila. Pag wala silang share, ibig sabihin nila, hindi sila stockholder. Uh, I mean, as you can see, meaning yan dapat yung board of directors, stockholder rin. Dapat stockholder rin siya. Pag wala na siyang pinagmamayari isang share, eh hindi na siya stockholder, eh hindi, hindi na siya qualified maging board of directors. The moment na yung director wala ng shares na pagmamayari, automatic tanggal yan. Terminated yan. Ito, obviously, yung share dapat must re be registered in his name and the director must continually own at least one share of this, ano, stock during his term. Otherwise, terminated na siya, automatic HTPM. Majority of directors must be residents of the Philippines. De joke lang. Wala na to sa new code na residents of the Philippines yung directors. O, tinanggal to sa new code. Dati, etong ano na to, so, para hindi kayo mano, Baka yung iba sa inyo, makalimutan ba sa inyo, wala to ah. Wala na to siya. Tinanggal to. Kaya lagyan na natin mark. Baka sa inyo, hindi mabasa yung dead joke, wala to sa new code, isali pa tong number 4. Sinali ko lang dyan, para ma-emphasize ma -emphasize na wala na yung requirement na to. For the non-stock corporation, simple lang. As long as member sila, the moment na hindi na sila member, uh, the moment a trustee is no longer a member, ng non-stock corporation, automatic rin, tanggal siya. Dito, di ba, pag hindi na stockholder, automatic, tanggal na si director. Ito, pag hindi na member, automatic, tanggal na si trustee. And dapat, good standing siya. Ibig sabihin, good boy. Now, the board may provide for additional qualifications sa director, such as ito. Pwede sila mag ano, additional qualifications. Kasi kung titingnan mo, simple yung simple, as long as may isa kang stock, pwede ka maging board, qualified ka. As long as member ka, pwede ka maging trustee, qualified ka. So, para to make sure na yung mga taong mamamahala ng corporation nyo, matitino, alam ko anong ginagawa nila, pwede mag-provide ng additional qualification sa bylaws, sa bylaws ng corporation. Pinag-usapan natin yung bylaws, di ba? Pero, baka wala pa kayong idea kung ano yung bylaws. Basically, ang bylaws, para siyang handbook, yon Para siyang handbook ng corporation. Na lahat ng gagawin nila, mga operations, etc., etc., nasa handbook na yon Bylaws yun. O yun, maganda nga na yun. Maganda ang comparison. Handbook ng corporation ng bylaws. Yung student handbook nyo, yun, bylaws yun. Bylaws, yun yung magandang comparison para sa isang bylaws ng corporation. Ito, additional ka, education attainment, dapat may masteral or doctorate. Pwede. Uh, competency, understanding the business, of course. Business yan eh. Lalo na pag stock corporation, alam, maglagay ka dyan, ng, hindi nila alam kung anong ginagawa nila. Pangit. Age of requirement, maturity daw, experience, integrity, probity, uh, integ may integridad. Hindi nadudungisan yung kanyang integridad. Asiduces, ano ko na itong asiduces? Search na sa Google. Ito, na mention ko di ba kanina uh, mas ito mas specific na ano na definition kung ano ang isang independent director basahin niyo na lang reason for the requirement kung bakit kailangan yung board of director may pagmamay-ari na isang ano isang stock it is commonly felt that the man with a financial interest at stake will devote more attention to the business today however manager chosen for its professional competence rather than its financial contribution. So basically, ang minimin yan, since may financial interest for corporation, considering that you are, ano, that you are invested in it, considering na may pagmamayari kang stock dyan, syempre, gagalingan mo ang pagpapatakbo ng corporation. Kasi, may financial interest ka dyan, eh, nag-invest ka dyan, alangan magloko-loko ka, eh di sira investment mo. O syempre, kailangan mong galingan para yung investment mo lumago. Yun yung primary reason kung bakit required na magkaroon ng at least isang stock ng corporation yung isang board of directors. Pero parang ano no? Isang stock lang yan sir eh. 
Bakit siya mag effort O baka sa ano? Kasi, later on, discuss rin natin, uh, other financial interest na meron yung corporation, na may compensation in the board of directors, may per DM sila, yun, hindi lang yun, hindi lang basta, hindi lang sa ownership of a single stock at least, may financial interest ang isang board of director. Pwede rin sa ano, uh, compensation, sa per DM later, discuss natin. Pero however, Gaya na sabi dito, management is chosen for its professional competence rather than its financial contribution. Oo, oh, hindi na lang basta-basta sa stocks. Titignan niya kung magaling ka ba sa trabaho mo. Kung magaling sa trabaho mo, edi you're hired. Ato, ah, kalimutan ko yan, oh. dagdag dito, balikan natin. Saan yun? Term, ito term. Kita nyo? One year para sa board of directors, three years naman para sa trustees. Sa old corporation code, etong trustees, one year rin yan. Pero ngayon, three years na ginawa nila. Shall not exceed one year. Min- parang premonition na yan ha? Kasi every year, uh, li- pero later sections pa naman to. Pero sabihin ko na ngayon. Pero every year kasi, every year, at least mag-meeting yan sila para mag-elect ng bagong sets of board of directors. Pwede rin nilang i-re-elect kung sino na nandyan. Pero magkakaroon talaga ng elections. Oo. For the board of directors, one year lang term nila. So, pag natapos yan, elect ulit. Or pwede nila i elect Depende sa trip nila. For the trustees, three years yan. After three years, nag-expire ng term. Pwede nila i elect si trustees. Kung anong trip nila. Ngayon, Sir, pag lumampas na ba ng one year? Pag lumampas na ba ng three years yung kanilang term? Automatic ba? Alis na sila? Hindi. Kasi dito, each director and trustees shall hold. office until the successor is elected and qualified. So, pwede silang magtagal dyan more than one year kapag wala pang na-elect na successor nila. Na-qualified, of course. Yun na. Pwede silang magtagal more than. So, saan na tayo? Okay, section 23 na tayo ngayon. So, section 23 uh, pertains to the election of the board of direct uh, direction trustees so provided here that except when the exclusive right is reserved for holders of founder shares under section 7 of this code tatandaan niyo diba itong exclusive right around ano, five years ata yung yung maximum ano no diba basically Each stockholder or member shall have the right to nominate any director or trustee who possesses all of the qualification and none of the disqualifications set forth in this code. Yung disqualification, we discuss um, later section yan. Pero yung qualification, nabigyan na natin in the previous ano, the previous section. So, itong sa ano, basically, uh, itong sa founder share natin, if you can still remember, section 7, na-discuss natin yan, yung founder share na yan, yung mga founders ng corporation, the originals, kumbaga, they shall have the right if stated sa exclusive right nila na sila yung mag-elect ng board of directors. Pero pag wala naman yung ganong stipulations or hindi na effective, nag-expire na yung exclusive right ng founder share, then, pasok na dito. Mm-hmm. Now, yung mga stockholders shall have the right to nominate any director or trustee who possesses all of the qualifications and the disqualifications. Okay. If you can still, uh, and take nota, di ba? Ang director, at the same time, stockholder rin yan. Ang trustee, at the same time, member rin yan. So, at all elections of directors or trustees, there must be present either in person or through a representative authorized to act by a written proxy. Itong proxy, from the word itself, understandable na yan. Parang present, uh, representative, other term. The owners of the majority of the outstanding capital stock or if there be no capital stock, a non-stock corporation, a majority of the members to, uh, entitled to vote. So as you can see here, dapat merong, uh, dapat present, tanda nyo, dapat present sa isang meeting. ng pag-elect ng board of direct ng pag-elect ng directors or trustees dapat present majority ng outstanding capital stock kapag start stock corporation or 
majority ng mga members dapat present para valid yung pag-elect nila. Dapat yung mga outstanding capital stock and yung mga members, they're also entitled to vote. Take note of that. Kasi alangan. Voting yan eh. Alangan. Lagay ka dyan ng, ng taong hindi, ano, ng taong, hindi, wala naman karapatang bumoto, di ba? When so authorized the bylaws of the corporation, ito, uh, ano to, uh, improvement to ng, ano, bulo, ng revised corporation code natin. When so authorized in the bylaws or by a majority of the board of directors, the stockholder or member may also vote through remote communication or absentia. Ibig sabihin, through email, authorized dapat yan. Or Skype, video call, or absentia, pwede lang sila magpadala ng letter. Pwede silang bumoto. Oh? Pero dapat authorized yan ng bylaws or majority ng board of directors pumayag sila. Now, provided all provided that the right to vote through such modes, communication and absentia, may be exercised in corporations vested in, with public interest, notwithstanding the absence of the provision in the bylaws of such corporations. So, uh, uh, pag ano, pag corporations not vested with public interest, kailangan authorized ng bylaws or approved ng majority ng board of directors para magkaroon ng remote communication or absentia voting. Pero, kapag yung corporation vested with public interest, automatic yan hot FM. Meron ng vested din sila ng right, right to vote through remote communication or absentia. Kapag vested with public interest, automatic makaboto sila in absentia. Now, a stockholder or member who participates through remote communication or absentia shall be deemed Present for purposes of, ito, hinihintay ko, quorum. Hin, yan. Hindi lang sa meeting ng board of directors nag apply yung concept ng quorum. Pati sa mga meetings kung saan kailangan ng involvement ng stockholders or members. Kailangan may quorum. As you can see here, hindi ko may mention, di ba? Sinadya kong hindi mention. As you can see here, oh, di ba? There must be present either in person or to representative, etc., etc. The owners of the majority of the outstanding capital stock. Or kapag walang capital stock, majority of the members entitled to vote. Ano yan? Quorum. No? Gets? Oh? Dapat majority present. Dapat they should constitute a quorum. Para pag may quorum sila, kung ano man yung magiging gagawin nila dyan, In this particular case, electing a director, electing a trustee, magiging valid. Kailangan may quorum. So, yun know, o. Ito yung quorum dito. When electing uh, the members of the board, majority ng owners, ng, uh, owners of the majority of the outstanding capital stock or kapag non-stock, majority of the members. Now, take note yun ha. Take note yun to. Owners of the majority of the outstanding capital stock. As you can see, hindi yan per head. Based yan sa number of stocks, sa ownership ng stocks, hindi yan per head. Hindi yan. 1,000 yung stocks mo, 10 sa kanya, so yung botohan nyo, 1-1. Hindi. 1,000 sa'yo, 10 sa kanya. Kung gano'ng karami yung stocks mo, gano'ng karami yung boto mo. Basically. Pero pagdating sa ano, majority of members yan, per head yan. Okay. Now, the election must be by ballot if requested by any vote, vo, uh, voting stockholder or member. Ito, mahaba-haba to. <sighs> In stock corporation, stockholders entitled to vote shall have the right to vote the number of shares of stock standing in their own names in the stock books of the corporation at time fixed na bylaws when the bylaws are silent at type of election. So, yan. Basically, ownership of stock. Ito, itong following sentence na to talks about the ways of voting. Ano mga ways na pwede silang bumoto? Pwede silang bumoto on a number of stock shares per person, commutative shares, etc., etc. This will be the same principle. May example naman later. Provided that the total number of votes, kasi hindi nyo ito maintindihan, eh, kung basahin nyo lang, kailangan may example talaga to. Provided that the total number of votes shall not exceed the number of shares per on Uh, shall not exceed the number of shares owned by the stockholder. Of course, kung ilan lang yung shares mo, yun, yung, yun lang yung number of votes na pwede mo. Ah, shit. Number of votes mo. Hindi ka pwede lumampas. 
as shown sa books ng corporation, multiple bill who provided, ito, malaga ito, no delinquent stocks will, shall be voted. Di ba delinquent stocks, ibig sabihin stocks na hindi pa na, no? Like for example, sinubscribe yan, yun, yeah? sa accounting for partnership and corporation siya, sinubscribe yan, kaso hindi nabayaran, so delinquent yan. Okay? Ah, na-discuss na naman itong delinquent stock sa past, past videos. Now, unless otherwise provided sa articles in corporation or in the bylaws, ito, itong portion na to for non-stock corporation, members of a non-stock corporation may cast as many votes as there are trustees to be elected but may not cast more than one vote for one candidate. May example rin ito mamaya, pero, gets, pero for this one, madali naman na gets eh. Yeah? Uh, kung ilan yung, ilan yung tawag dito? Ilan yung, ano tawag dito yung sa pag-election? Ilan yung representatives? Hindi. Ilan yung pwede mong botohin? Ano tawag dito? Candidates yun. Ah, dito pala. Dito lang palang word do. Kung ilan yung candidates, yun yun yung number of votes mo. Pero hindi ka pwede, hindi mo pwedeng, example, five candidates meron. So may five votes ka. Pero hindi mo pwedeng ibuhos yung five votes mo na yun sa isang candidate. Isang candidate, isang boto lang. Yun lang yun. No means for the election receiving the highest number of votes shall be declared elected. Plurality. Plurality. Hindi majority. Tandaan yung difference yun. Plurality. Basta mas marami yung votos nila compared sa iba, kahit hindi majority, plural, panalo pa rin sila. Ngayon, if no election is held or the owners of the majority of the outstanding capital stock or majority of the members of the vote are not present, Meaning, hindi na ito yung election or walang quorum. Yun, no? Walang quorum. Kasi wala yung majority. Uh, by proxy, remote conversation, such meeting may be adjourned and cor the corporation shall proceed in accordance with Section 25. Later pa. Director or trustees elected shall perform their duties as prescribed by the rules of, by the law, by law, rules of good, good corporate governance, parit batas yan. Parang gov corporation na yun eh. And bylaws the corporation. Ito salient points. Basically changes na nangyari. Now the new revised corporation code allows to vote via remote communication in absentia or through the traditional proxy if authorized by the bylaws or by a majority vote of the stockholders. Thus physically absent stockholders and company officers would be allowed to join and vote. Yun. Diba sa uh, discuss natin sa ano, starting pa lang sa introduction natin ng Corporation Code, pinadali yung, papag, yung pagpapatakbo ng Corporation Code. Easement, pinadali. Pina-easy, pina-breezy. Innovations, remote communications, as most available, best public interest, etc. Directors, ito, kailangan na rules of, rules of good corporate governance. Mo, oh, dinagdag to. Now, elections. The following limitations or conditions are imposed in the elections of the board uh, directors or trustees. Ito. At any meeting of stockholders or members called for the election of directors or trustees, there must be a present. Ito, dapat may quorum. Nasabi natin to. Quorum ng owners ng majority of the outstanding capital stock. Tandaan, kapag stock corporation, owners of majority of outstanding capital stock, hindi yan per head. Number of stock ang basihan dyan. Kapag naman non-stock, Majority of the members, yan, per head yan. Ngayon, pwede present in person, representative authorized to a written proxy, or absentia, or remote communication. Tandaan, when it comes to remote communication absentia, dapat approved ng, uh, provided ng ano, bylaws nila, or approved ng board of directors. Pero kapag vested in, with public interest naman yung corporation, automatic hot FM. Maka-absentia sila, maka-remote communication sila. Ito, pa, pag may nag-request na stockholder or member na by ballot, edi eh, by ballot yan. Kapag wala naman nag-request, edi eh, pwede silang magbibaboche, roll call, raising offense, o sino para kay ano, kay Poncho Pilato. Ito, ito, para kay Juan Tamad. Ito, okay, raising offense. Or bibaboche, sigawan yan. Eh. Ah, for Juan Tamad, say A, ah, say I, I, yan. It's valid except when there's request. No? Pag may mag-request na nga, no? Balot, kahit isang ano, kahit yung isang stockholder na ano yan, na isa lang yung kanyang stock, pag nag-request yan, ala, hindi mo pwedeng tanggihan. Balot kayo, balot. Pero usually, balot talaga yan eh. Bakit? Kasi may secrecy. 
eh kung magbibabotche kayo, kung mag-raising per or ha- of hands kayo, eh malaman kung sino yung ano, nagboto for this, hindi bumoto sa iyo, o oh, hard feeling 'yan. <laughs> so kayo usually balot 'yan kasi may secrecy. A stockholder cannot be deprived in the article of the corporation in the bylaws of statutory right to use any of the methods of voting in the election of directors na stock, uh, bawal yung delinquent. Uh, quorum of present, the candidate receiving the highest number of votes shall be declared. Ito, sinabi ko ito, plurality, hindi majority. Like for example, President Duterte, nanalo siya noong 2016 election. There were about around 40 million something, ah, around 35 to 40 million number of votes. He gained 16 million. Now, hindi yun majority. Pero siya yung naging presidente. Plurality yun. Kasi kung majority ang kailangan, di, da, dapat more than 20 million yung nano niya. Kasi around 35 to 40 million eh. Kung ano yung majority nun? Ang legis ang nagbumoto eh. Kung anong majority nun? Siya yung presidente. Pero hindi naman ganun yung ano natin eh. Plurality tayo. As long as sa yung nakakuha ng maraming boto, pinakmalaking boto as compared to the other candidates, then siya yung nanalo. Yun yung concept ng plurality. Hindi majority ang ginagamit. Plurality. Padamihan lang kayo. Delinquent stock bawal in case of to hold election, to adjourn, date time, proceed to section 25. The requisite, oh, the requisite notice must be given. Siyempre, sabihan mo yung mga stockholders, mga members mo na may botohan na mangyayari. For one to be elected as director, trustee, or officer, it is not required that he must be physically present at a meeting at time of his nomination and election unless it is otherwise provided by laws. By director, trustee can attend or vote. Pag election niya, pwede siyang magano. Pwede hindi siya physically present kapag uh, allowed ng bylaws. Pero kapag dating sa board meetings, ala, kailangan present yan siya. Hindi siya pwede mag-proxy, hindi siya pwede mag-representative. Uh, pwede na tata mag dito eh, nakalimutan ko. Check natin later. Ito, methods of voting. Every stockholder entitled to vote shall have the right to vote in person, proxy, or absentia, or remote communication. The numbers of shares stock standing at uh, the time fixed by the bylaws in his name, etc., etc. Basta sa mayari ng stock goods. Ito, ito, itong mga next na ano to, ways of voting. Ito yan sila. Oh. Yung sinabi natin, in-skip natin. Ito na yan sila. Yan, maintindihan mo ba yan? Hindi, mahirap yung tindihan pag walang example. O ito na example nila. State voting. By this voting method, every stockholder may vote such number of shares as far as many persons as there are directors to be elected. Papaano ito illustration? Si A, meron siyang 100 shares. Ngayon, meron kay uh, limang directors yung iboboto nila or kailangang may elect. So with that, provided here, A is entitled to 500 votes obtained by multiplying 100 times 5. Kasi 100 shares, 5 directors kailangan, so may 500 votes siya. He may give to the 5 candidates he wants to be elected 100 votes each. Under this method, the votes are distributed equally among the 5 candidates without preference. O yan, yan si state voting. Napaka-simple. Pero napaka-restrictive, di ba? Kaya meron tayong other ways of voting. Ito, cumulative voting for one candidate. Kasi dito, di ba? What if yung isa lang yung gusto mo? Ayaw mong botohin yung iba. Kasi ayaw mo, pangit daw sila na. So, yung isa, pogi, crush mo. O yun ang botohin mo. Joke lang nga, joke lang sa pangit joke. Ah, masamang ugali yun. Yung apat, masamang ugali. Yung isa, mabait. Eh. Tapos yun, yung, yung, yung mabait lang gusto mong botohin. Hindi eh. punta tayo dito sa another way of voting. Dito sa cumulative voting for one candidate, In this method, the stockholder is allowed to concentrate his votes and give one candidate as many votes as the number of directors to be elected multiplied by the number of his shares shall equal. Kasi dito, di ba, restrictive o walang preference, pantay-pantay, distributed equally. So, pangit naman. So, needless to say, state voting does not benefit minority stockholders kasi they will not be able to elect any director over the objection of the stockholder stockholders who own at least 51% na capital stock. Kasi nga, oh. So with that, the privilege of cumulative voting is accorded for the purpose of giving minority stockholders representation in the board of directors by electing one or more 
directors, but such provision has been held not to ensure minority stockholder proportional representation or of the representation. Meaning lang yan. Kasi pag follow mo state voting, ala, kawawa si ano, si minority stockholder. Kasi tong state voting, kanya-kanya to sila, mga stockholders. Eh kung sino may maari ng majority, ala, sila lang makaka-elect ng ano. Sila, kung sino lang yung gusto nilang ma-elect na director or trust or na director, yun lang yung, yun lang yung ma-elect. Pero since dito, sa cumulative voting for one candidate, meaning lang yan, before, before tayo mag-proceed sa, sa illustration, ito sa baba. A director elected because of the vote of minority stockholders who united, kinumbine nila, cumulative voting. Kinumbine nila. Kaya nga dito, cumulative voting for one candidate. Yung mga minority stockholders, alam nila kapag divided sila, hindi sila makaka-elect ng gusto nilang director. So, naisip nila, uh, divided we fall, united we stand. So, kinumbine nila ang kanilang mga shares para maka-elect sila ng isang director that will represent them. Mm -mm. And ito, later sa section natin, a director elected because of the vote of minority stockholder who united in cumulative voting shall not be removed without just cause. Mm -mm. Kasi tatanggal mo ng representation yan eh, pero later discuss natin sila. Ito, illustration. Si A daw uh, owns 200 shares of stock and there are 5 directors to be elected. He is entitled to vote all of which and may cast favor in one candidate. So yan, di ba? Kay state voting, hindi niya pwede gawin. Kasi, walang preference. Distributed equally. Pero dito, kay cumulative goods lang. Kung 1,000 votes sa meron, pwede niya ipasok doon sa isang tao na mabaw. Ap, lima sila masama. Ah, limang candidates. Apat, sila masa, ah, apat sa kanila masama. Yung isa mabait. Pagdating kay state voting, ale, wala siya magawa. Pa useless yung, kahit hindi niya iboto yung apat, na masasayang yung, eight, yung 400 votes niya. Di ba? Yung 100 votes kasi maximum 100 votes lang malagay niya kay isang mabait na director. Pangit si state voting, no, napaka-restrictive. So pagdating dito kay cumulative voting for one candidate, ala, pwede niyang ibuhos lahat-lahat ng votings ng votes niya sa isang Director na yon na mabait. Hindi niya pipiliin yung apat na masama. Doon lang siya sa isang mabait na director. Ito naman, pagdating sa minority stockholders. Suppose that out of a total of 1,000 shares, CANB representing a group of stockholder owns 800 shares. Na, kung sila yan, sila, kung state voting yan, sila lang makakapili ng ano, makaka-elect ng board of directors kung state voting yan. Pero pagdating kay cumulative voting for one candidate, ang mga minorities, in this case, CDENF, representing, representing another group of stockholders, 200 shares, pwede silang maka-elect ng kanilang sariling representative. If there are five directors to be elected, they end being entitled to 4,000 votes, si CDENF, 1,000. Kasi, 800 times 5, 4,000, 800, 5 times 200, 1,000. The highest number of votes A and B can give each, uh, each of their four candidates is 1,000. Oo, oh, hindi nila yan. Dito naman, si na CDNF, pag accumulate nila yung vote nila ng 1,000 in favor of a candidate, then itong mga minority stockholders ito would be able to secure a representation in the board of directors. So ganyan, nag-work ang isang cumulative voting in favor of the minority pwede nilang i-combine yung kanilang votes para maka-make sure sila na at least one. Or at least may representation sila sa board of directors. Kawawa naman. May stake rin sila sa company. Ito, by distribution, basahin nyo lang. Same concept yun yan. Ito, punta tayo sa ano, voting in non-stock corp non corporation. Ito naman, pag mga members. As we have said, sa stock corporations, hindi per head. Per share, per share yan. Kung saan sa share na yon doon magbibase yung votes mo. Dito naman, pagdating sa voting sa non-stock corporation, per head na to, automatic. Per head of the members. 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 Members of the non-stock corporation may cast as many votes as there are trustees to be elected, but 
Ito na, sab- na-explain natin ito kanina. But may nakasumor daman kanina. It is matter voting in non-stock corporation unless otherwise. This is the manner of voting in non-stock corporation unless otherwise provided sa AOI or the bylaws. Ito. If he is a member of non-stock corporation and there are five directors to be elected, he is entitled to only five votes, he may give one vote each to understand the man to the five candidates if he wants them to be elected. Pero, per candidate, he can only cast one vote. Unless cumulative voting is authorized sa kanilang, bylaw, uh, sa kanilang AOI or bylaws. So, unless otherwise stated, ito yung, itong first sentence na to, one vote, one candidate, yun yung masusunod. Unless otherwise stated. Thus, where cumulative voting exists and there are nine trustees to be elected and um, a member's ten total cast votes, nine votes. So, yan. Napakasimple lang. Walang complication. So, pinag-usapan natin yung mga board of directors, yeah? mga board of trustees. Now, let's talk about the next part ng ating, ano, the next group of people ng Title 3, which are the corporate officers. Ito, Section 24 provides for them. Now, immediately preceding or immediately after their election, the directors of a corporation must formally organize and elect the president, who must be a director also, a treasurer na dapat residente ng Pilipinas, and a, sec- and a secretary na should also be or who must be a citizen and a resident ng bansa natin. And Letter D, such other officers as may be provided by in the bylaws. Pwede pa sila magdagdag. Talaga na chief supreme being. Ganun. If the corporation is vested with public interest, ito public interest naman. Uh, take note lang, di ba? Nalista natin ano yung mga corporations na vested with public interest in the preceding in the preceding art section sa Take note. Yun yung mga uh, corporations vested with public interest. Now the board shall also elect a compliance officer. Yan, dagdag yan. The same person may hold two or more positions concurrently sa mga officers. Yeah? Pwede sila mag, ano, two or more, ano, two or more positions. Pwede nilang pagsabayin. Chicks nga, napapagsabay ng mga, ano, positions pa kaya. Except, may exception tayo dyan. Except that no one shall act as a president and a, and a secretary at the same time or as a president and a treasurer at the same time unless otherwise allowed in this code which is na ano so pwedeng maging secretary and treasurer at the same time pero president and treasurer president or secretary uh, and secretary bawal the officer shall manage the corporation and perform such duties as may be provided in the bylaws and or as resolved by the board of directors so yun duties nila either galing sa bylaws or galing sa Board of Directors. Ito, salient points. Basically, what changes happened in this particular section. The new law requires the treasurer to be a resident of the Philippines. Dati, hindi. Sa BP-68, hindi. Specific provisions on the election of compliance officer for corporations, corporations, corporations vested with public interest. Sir, ano yung compliance officer? Basically, it is an officer kung saan yung task niya is to make sure that the corporation is properly following outside laws and regulatories and regulations. Outside laws and regulations. Meaning, simple lang eh. In layman's term, itong si compliance officer, from the name itself eh, compliance. Meaning, make sure niya, ni corporation, yung mga batas ng bansa natin, yung mga regulations, sinusunod ng corporation. Yun yung trabaho niya, compliance. Pam- Ayun, yun, dyan ang pangalan eh, compliance. What's more to, ano, what's more to us? So yun, yan yung compliance. Ulitin natin, compliance officer is an officer whose designated job is to make sure that the uh, corporation is properly complying with the laws, with the outside laws and regulations governing the corporation. Affecting the corporation. Para yung corporation, hindi lalabag sa batas kasi pag lumabag sa batas, aba, lagot. da ano ah uh, hahabulin niya ng gobyerno gobyerno ito changes and revision treasurer to sa ano natin previous code natin wala uh, wala tong resident resident 
And the duties of the no, elected boards may be provided not only by the bylaws, but also resolved by the board of directors. Ito, oh, bago. Pointed out. Dati, kung ano sa bylaws, yun lang yung pwedeng gawin ng officers ngayon, pwede na silang bigyan ng additional duties ng board of directors. Innovation, corporation to, compliance officers, yan. Mga changes, revisions na nangyari for this revised code under this section. Now, corporate officers and agents. Now, as I have said kanina, di ba? What's the main difference in layman's term overall? Anong difference ng isang director sa isang officers ng corporation? Directors basically, or trustees also, basically, they have, uh, they oversee the management of the corporation. They control it. Pagdating sa officers, what they do is to do the day-to-day -day activities ng, papag, ng pagpapatakbo sa corporation. And this, ano, this number clearly uh, provides for that. The board of directors or trustees, as we have seen, formulates the broad policy of the corporation and directs the conduct, the conduct of its business operations. But the task of actual management, yung day-to-day -day operations and carrying on the details of business operation and corporate policy, delegated yan sa officers elected by the board and over whom it exercises supervision. So na, oversee the operations. Oo, oversee the management of a corporation. In, sinusupervise ng board of directors yung mga officers. Okay, klaro. Yeah? Kumbaga, si board of directors, sasabi niya, this is the direction that we are going to follow. Yun ang sabi ni board of directors. etong mga officers, sila na ngayon ang magtatrabaho, paano sila makakarating on that direction? Yeah? Parang alam yung difference ng uh, strategy sa tactics, di ba? Ang strategy, sasabihin mo yung overall plan. Now, we will go to this. We will attack this place. Diba? Yun yung strategy yun. We will go to this. We will attack this place. We will go to this place. Yung tactics, yun na yung process or yung manner. Paano mo gagawin? Paano mo ma-achieve yung goal mo sa strategy mo? Yung mas specifics, kumbaga? So, yun, yun. Yun yung, differ yun yung isa sa mga primary difference ni board sa officers. Si board, sasabihin lang, ito ang, ito ang goal natin. Ito, dapat, ito yung direction ng ating company. Si officer, sila nang bahala. Sila na yung magtataktik. Yun. Na kung paano nila ma-achieve yun. O kaya nga dito, actual management and carrying on the details of business operations and corporate policy. Day-to-day -day operations, sila na yan. Kung saan, this was delegated to them by the board when they were elected. And kung saan itong si board, may supervision, supervision. Ma, will exercise supervision over them. Titingnan nila to make sure that these officers are carrying out their duties properly, diligently, in good faith. Oh, klaro ni, ano nila, na? klaro na yung difference nila. The only officers of a corporation are those who are given the character either by the code or the charter or by laws. Kasi as you can see here, oh, Ito yung provided ng code. President, treasurer, and secretary. Then, pwede pang mangdagdag as basta provided sa bylaws. The rest can be considered merely as employees or subordinate officials. So, yan. Matatawag mo lang na officer yan kapag yung character niya provided by the code or nakalagay sa charter ng corporation or sa bylaws. Otherwise, employees na yan sila or subordinate. The President, Vice President, Treasurer, and Secretary are commonly regarded as the principal or executive officers. O yan, di ba? Mga executives tawag sa kanila, commonly tawag sa executive officers of the corporation. However, if the bylaws enumerate the officers to be elected by the board, the provision is conclusive and the board is without power to create new offices without amending the bylaws except kung yung bylaws na mismo yung nagsabi na pwede silang mag-create ng additional offices. Yun ha? Ito, corporate employees, na-mention naman natin dito, dito yung sila daba, oh. Now, actually, all officers of the corporation are its employees. 
Although in common usage, the term officers is meant to refer those elected by the board or by the stockholders' members, occupying positions involving the exercise of authority and power in the management of corporate affairs, while the term employees, those whose duties are clerical or manual nature. Uh, alam ko familiar kay sa eh, sa term na supervisory and management. Di ba? And sa rank and file employees. O yan, di ba? Ang officers, basically, they are the supervisory management. Ang mga employees, basically, in this context, ha, they are the rank and files. Ayan. Elections of officers by the board, the election of the administrative officers, such as the president, treasurer, secretary, and such other officers as may be provided sa bylaws, is in turn entrusted to the board of directors or trustee. So, di ba? Pasapasaan yan. Ang stockholders, ang members, silang mag elect ng board of directors, board of trustees. Ang board of directors, ang board of trustees, sila naman yung mag elect sinong magiging officers ng company. Pasapasaan, delegate, delegate. Thus, pursuant to the bylaws, the board, by a vote of majority or all of them, or of all, or entire number of its member may elect a vice president, general manager, an auditor, and such other officers as needed in the nature of business may demand. Kasi di ba, di ba sabi lang dito, ang specifically expressly stated ng, ano, ng batas, president, treasurer, secretary. So, pwede, and yung letter D, pwede si president magdagdag. O, oh, saan na tayo? Oh, lumampas. Ano pwede nga dagdag nila? Vice president, general manager, auditor, o oh, lagi pa supreme commander, yeah, sergeant at arms. Kung ano man, ano, trip nila in uh, in relation to the needs and nature of the business. Lagay sila mission escort kung appropriate sa business nila. Compensation, term of office, and removal. It is within the power of the board to fix the salaries of corporate officers who meet appoints for the power to employ must necessarily include the power to grant compensation. It may likewise grant bonuses to them subject to the test of reasonableness. Hmm. Board of Directors bala. The term of the office of these officers may be fixed in the bylaws otherwise they shall be deemed for one year and until their successors have been elected by the board. So same lang sana. Do? Parang same concept sa Board of Directors. One year, one year until na ma-elect yung successor nila. Hindi pa ma-elect then they shall continue their job. Ito, na-mention natin ito, positions concurrently held by the same person. Any two or more of the positions may be held concurrently by the same person. So, pwede yan, di ba? Yung treasurer secretary, pwede silang, ano, uh, pwede si same person lang yan. Pero, may expressly prohibited, sinabi yung section 24. President and secretary or president and treasurer, bawal. Kasi incompatible with each other due to the very nature appertaining to each office. The rationale behind the provision is to ensure the effective monitoring of each separate or of each officer's separate functions. Now, ito ang sources of power or authority ng corporate officers. Some provisions or statute, articles of incorporation, bylaw, and resolution of the board of directors or trustees. Ito. Chairman of the Board. Extent of, of authority of some particular officers. Ito, apat sila. Apat. Uh, anim. So, si Chairman of the Board, ito, alam natin to, para ito na nakikita sa narinig eh, di ba? Basically, the concept of Board Chairman and his functions as an executive varies so widely in different companies as to be identifiable. Yeah? Uh, kaya, as we know, yung chairman of the board, usually yan yung president. Tapos pwede pa lang magdagdag na nga, chief executive. Ayun, naalala ko na. Additional officers na pwedeng ilagay nila, chief executive officers. Chief executive officer. Which is also the same time as the chairman of the board. Which is also the same time as the president. Pwede yan. Yun, naalala ko na yung mga ch Or chief operating officer, COO. Chief financial officer. Yan, mga additional officers ng corporation. So, the president, to, 
Naalala ko na, kanina ko, an, kanina ko pa ilala, ano, mga chip-chip na yun, o oh, yun, chip executive officer yun. So, ito, punta tayo sa number two, the president. Yung presidente ng corporation must be a director or a trustee. And take note, ulitin yan. Hindi pwede maging treasurer or secretary at the same time. And since director trustee sad ka required to be a member of the board, obviously, or be a board member. Now, by law, the president shall reside at shall preside sa yung maglilid at all meetings of the director or trustees as well as the stock, uh, meetings of stockholders or members. Unless the bylaws provide otherwise or in the absence of the chairman or vice chairman. Powers is conferred by the board and the bylaws. So, nakadepende kung anong powers nila, kung anong provide ng bylaws and ng resolution, uh, uh, resolve ng board. Ito naman si vice president, basically, From the word itself, same lang, next in rank to the president and usually the alter ego. Ito, secretary, mahalaga rin to siya. Gaya na sabi natin, resident and citizen, required yan. Na secretary, ganyan. Ang assumption secretary, sa yung custodian ng corporate records. And since sa yung custodian, dapat available siya. In the regular conduct and operation of the corporation para may access. Kasi sa, sa ang tagahawak ng records eh. So dapat alam kung... Pus- Uh, dapat available siya at all times in the regular conduct ng operations para easy access sa corporate records. Now, as, as we have said, sa yung custodian, in relation to that custodiary, uh, custodiary, custodiary duties, siya rin yung nagkikip ng stock and transfer books and makes proper and necessary entries therein. So, nasa kanya yung listahan, sino-sino yung may stock sa corporation na kay secretary. So, sino-sino yung stock sa corporation? Sila yung may-ari ng corporation. Now, the secretary also issues notices of meetings and has custody of the corporate seal which he or she uses when attesting the signatures the signatures of the officers to important documents. So, mahalaga ang ano yung secretary, no? Si treasurer naman, uh, resident and citizen, the treasurer of the corporation is the proper officer entrusted with the authority to receive and keep the money of the corporation and to disperse them as may be authorized. So, sa'yo basically, nagmamanage ng finances ng corporation. Ah, sa'yo nagmamanage ng finances ng corporation. So, the view is taken that he has no inherent power to bind the corporation by contracts or to borrow money in behalf of the corporation. So, sila lang tagahawak ng pera, tagahanap ng pera, pero yung nagdi-decide anong gagawin sa pera, hindi sa kanya. Oo. Kung anong, kung anong gagawin doon sa pera, hindi, hindi siya yung magdi-decide. Of course, sa board na yan. Now, meron ito na tawag na controller. Ito, nadala na sa, sa management accounting nyo, yung difference ni, ni, con, ni treasurer sa controller. So, si controller, difference siya from a treasurer. The form is said to be an officer appointed to control the accounts and check expenditures by virtue of his office. The authority of the controller is restricted to doing things which are usual and necessary in the performance of just duties. So, hindi naman dyan dinefine kung anong controller, eh, ang controller. So, ano ba talaga yan, sir? Gayto lang yung difference sila. As I have said, treasurer siya yung nagmamanage ng finances ng corporation. Yeah? Naghahanap ng pera, papano gagastos yung pera, loans, loans. Si controller, yung trabaho niyan, para siyang accountant. Siya yung accountant. Minimake sure niya na yung accounting and recording ng corporation maayos. Yeah? Yan yung difference lang dalawa. Si treasurer, sa yung nag-handle lang finances. Si controller, basically, sa yung chief accountant ng, ng corporation. Nag-make sure na yung accounting, financial reporting, ng corporation, maayos. Yun na yung difference sa dalawa. Treasurer, finances ng company. Controller, sa yung accountant. Sa yung nag-account. nag ng financial reporting ng company. And lastly, general manager. General manager. At the, pre- uh, the present time, si, uh, the general business of the corporation is frequently entrusted to the management of a general manager. Sa talagang hands-on or the managing officer who has power to bind the corporation by acts within the scope of his apparent authority. O, di ba? Isa to sa mga exceptions. Accordingly, the general manager or the managing officer has very broad prow- broad, 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 broad powers, especially as far as third persons are concerned. 
So yan, yan, mga officers ng corporation. Now, going to section 25, diba, na-mention natin ito kanina, uh, 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 basically itong section ano, 25 talks about the report of election of directors, trustees, and officers, non-holding of election, and cessation from office. Saan sila nagre-report? Kay Securities and Exchange Commission. Now, section 25 provides that within 30 days after the election of the board of the directors, trustees, and officers of the corporation, the secretary or any of the other officers of the corporation shall submit to the commission kung si yung names, nationalities, shareholdings, and residence addresses ng mga na-elect the directors, trustees, and officers. Papadala nila yan. Bibigyan nila ng notice ng report yung Securities and Exchange Commission. Ngayon naman, in cases where there is non-holding of elections and the reasons therefore shall be reported to the commission within 30 days from the date of scheduled election. Meaning, kapag yung there's a failure of election or non-holding of election. Uh, kasi, oh, di ba sabi natin? Kap pa some reasons, ano, is pag walang quorum, so hindi sila makaka-elect. Kasi kahit na magpili sila doon, magbotohan sila doon, since walang quorum, hindi valid yung botohan nila. Kailangan may quorum. So pag walang quorum, non-holding elections. Example yun. So non-holding of elections shall be reported ito, 30 days from the date of scheduled election. So pag January 30, yung scheduled election, kaso walang election na na-hold, na-held. Yeah? So 30 days after that, or within 30 days, which is February, Probably 28, 30 days, 30 days. So, ah, di man one month ang sinabi, 30 days man. So, January 31, ta, 28, 20 na, 28 na lang. So, March, oh, March 2. Within that period, dapat mag-report na sila sa commission. Na, oy commission, ah, medyo hindi kami naka-elect dito, ah, oh, noong January 31 eh. Hindi kami naka-elect due to these reasons, lagi nila, because there was no quorum present. Yan. Now, in connection with that report, dapat the report shall also specify a new date for the election, which shall not be later than 60 days from the scheduled date. So, kung January 31 yan, 60 days within that, mag-elect na sila. Ah, tapos sabi, oh, follow up sa letter. Kasunod ng letter. Ah, sige, with at this state commission, ah, mag na kami, mag-elect kami ulit. Mag-elect na kami. Kukontinue na namin yun. May make sure na namin na proper procedures are followed. Na may quorum. Yun. Mag basta ang important dyan, mag-report sila sa commission. Within the specified date. Na yun. Na yun. Ngayon, if no new date has been designated, nag-report lang sila pero walang date kung kailan mag-elect. Then, or if the rescheduled election is li likewise not held. Yun. Sinabi nila at this date, Reschedule daw. Pero hindi na matuloy. Another reason, walang quorum. Then, papasok na dyan si commission. The commission may upon the application of a stockholder, member, director, or trustee, and after verification of the unjustified non-holding of the election, summarily order that an election be held. Utusan na sila. Oy, mapangit. Election na kayo. Unjustified ang ano nyo, reason nyo. Ano ba yan? O, tiyo, take nota, unjustified, hold non-holding. After verification of unjustified. Pag justified naman, good yan. Kunti nyo lang, specified sila dito. Para pag unjustified, like tinamad yung mga shareholders na magpano, na magpa, mag, na magkonsisute ng quorum, like that. Unjustified yun. So, utusan na yun sila ng commission. Oy! Ngilek daw kayo dyan. The commission shall have the power to issue such order. Such order. As may be appropriate, including orders directing the issue of a notice stating that the time and place election, designated presiding officer, and the record date or dates for the determination of stockholders or members entitled to vote. Now, notwithstanding any provisions of the Articles of Incorporation or Bylaws to the contrary, the share of stock of members represented at such meeting and entitled to vote shall constitute a quorum for purpose to conduct the conduct election should the director, trustee, or officer die, resign, or in any manner, ceases to hold office. The secretary, or the director, trustee, or officer of the corporation shall, within seven days from knowledge thereof, report in writing such fact to the commission. 
So yun lang, simple lang si Section 25. Ito lang yung mga salient remarks, changes, revision. Inclusion ng inclusion of shareholding sa report na isasubmit sa SEC within 30 days uh, na yung corporation should notify within 30 days from the date to schedule election kung walang election. Then, it will specify in the same report a new date for the election provided not later than 60 days from the 60 days, 60 days from the scheduled election. Notify rin sa SEC when an officer or director or trustee uh, uh, ceases to hold office uh, within 7 days from knowledge of death, resignation in any manner, changes to revision, same same non-holding reason, okay. So, yan si section 25. Madaling ano, madaling, madaling section. Going to section 26, provides for the, di ba? Na-mention natin kanina kung ano mga qualifications provided in this code for the, uh, para maging qualified yung isang stockholder as a, as a director or yung members as trustee. And in this section 26, provides for the disqualification of such ng directors, trustee, or officers. A person shall be qualified or shall be disqualified, I mean, from being a director, trustee, or officer of any corporation if within five years from prior ah, if within five years prior to the election or appointment as such, the person was convicted of a final judgment or of an offense punishable by imprisonment for a period of six years. So, at, at least six years yan. Penal ano yan? Penal yan. Penal punishment yan. For violating this code, for violating the Public Act 879 also security, security Regulation Code. Yan. Ito naman. Kung found administrative liable for any offense involving fraudulent tax. And lastly, by a foreign court or equivalent foreign regulatory authority for acts, violations or misconduct similar to those enumerated in paragraphs A and B. So, the foregoing is without prejudice to qualifications or other disqualifications which the commission, the primary regulatory agency or the Philippine Competition Commission may impose in its promotion of good corporate governance or as a sanction in its administrative proceedings. So, ito yung mga salient points. Uh, new RC provides new criteria and the disqualification. Sa ano kasi? Tag dito. Sa dating ano, dating corporation code. Let, letter A lang ata yun eh. If I remember correctly. Particularly itong ano, imprisonment. Yan lang ata yung ano eh. That will disqualify. Pero ngayon, dinagdaganan nila. dami na oh. So ito, bagong ano, foreign court. Conviction of final judgment. Ah, by the way, ang final judgment niya, court, korte yan ah, korte. Eh, ay nahatulan kita. O oh, yun, convicted. Disqualification ito. Changes revision, disqualification of director status officer for violation of the revised corp code and Republic Act 87 na now clearly requires conviction by final judgment. It also adds to new disqualification. Finding of administrative liability for any offense involving fraudulent tax and judgment or finding a foreign court. Oh, the SEC and the Philippine Commission. So as you can see here, oh, atong five years, example, Ah, uh, na-convict ka, 2015. Hindi ka pwede maging officer within 5 years. Pwede ka lang maging officer after 2020. Kasi 5 years of, uh, 2016, oh, i-run natin. July 2015, na-convict ka. 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020. So, mga August, or after ng ano, July something, no, July... July 1, 2015 ka na convict. So, 5 years running. So, July 2, 2020, pwede ka nang qualified ka nang ma-elect. Basta, not within 5 years. Okay? Klaro naman yan, di ba? Ito, foreign court. Kasi ito, wala ito dati. O, like, na-convict ka sa foreign court for violations. Tapos, pag apuin mo dito sa Pilipinas, hindi ka naman ano. Hindi ka disqualified kasi sa foreign court yan eh. Ngayon, sinama na nila. So, jurisprudence na sa ating bansa na the power to appoint carries with it the power to remove. 
which is shown here in shown 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 here in section 27. Section 27 pertains to the removal of directors or trustees. Tandaan, the power to remove, uh, the power to appoint carries with it the power to remove. Any director or trustee of a corporation may be removed from office. Sino pwede mag-remove? By a vote. By a vote. By a vote of stockholders holding or representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital stock. Or kapag non-stock yung corporation, by a vote of at least two-thirds of the members entitled to vote. So, dapat ma-reach itong numbers na to para uh, valid yung pag-remove nila sa director or sa trustee. Now, provided that such removal shall take place either at a regular meeting of a corporation or at a special meeting called for the purpose. And in either cases, after previous notice to stockholders or members of the corporation of the intention to propose such removal at the meeting. So, kapag may regular meeting dyan, isa sa sa notice na isa sa mga agenda ng meeting na yun is to remove the director. Or kapag special meeting yan, ito, a special meeting of the stockholders or members for the purpose of removing any director trustee must be, ito, called by the secretary on order of the president, yung officer, or upon a written demand of the stockholders representing or holding at least a majority of the outstanding capital stock. So either si president or yung stockholder na no, stockholders na may ano, holding majority of the outstanding capital stock or a majority of the members entitled to vote, for, uh, pwede silang magtawag ng meeting. Sabihan nila yung secretary. Uy, secretary, special meeting tayo. Anong agenda ng meeting, sir? Tatanggalin natin yung isa or dalawang directors na yan or da isa o dalawang trustees na yan. Yun, trabaho ni secretary, di ba? Sa previous slides natin, trabaho ni secretary yung magbigay ng notice ng meetings. In this, in this instance, special meeting to remove certain directors or trustees. Ngayon, if there are no secretaries or if the secretary, despite demand, coming from the, ano, fails or refuses, ayaw niya, to call the special meeting or to give notice thereof, then the stockholder or members of the corporation signing the demand may call for the meeting by directly addressing the stockholders or members. Sila na mismo ang gagawa. Ah, sige, secretary, ayaw mo ha. Sige, kami na lang. Kami na lang mag-initiate. Notice of the time and place of such meeting as well as of the intention to propose such removal must be given by publication or by written notice prescribed in this code. Removal may be, to take note, removal, na-mention na natin ito kanina, removal, take note, removal may be with or without cause. So kung trip lang nilang tanggalin yan, ng mga stockholders na yan, ng majority, ng owning the ano, outstanding capital or majority of the members, trip lang nilang magtanggal, trip-trip lang, pwede, oh, with or without cause. Provided, take note, may ano dyan, may caveat dyan. Provided that remove, provided, <laughs> provided that removal without cause may not be used to deprive, ito na mention natin to kanina, minority stockholders or members of the right of representation to which they may be entitled under sec sec section 23 of this code. So, pwede lang silang, <laughs> pwede lang silang, uh, when it comes to directors that was voted, by the cumulative votes of minority stockholders, dapat may just cause kung bakit sila, kung bakit yung tatanggalin. Kasi pag without just cause yan, without cause, then you're depriving the minority stockholder of their representation sa board. So kapag magtatanggal ka ng director, na kung saan yung director na yon was elected through a cumulative voting by the minority stockholder, dapat just cause yan. Hindi yan pwede pag without just cause. Now, the commission shall motto proprio. Sa anong meaning? Sir, tama daw kung mag-google, sir. Anong meaning ng motto proprio? Ang meaning ng motto proprio, legal ano yan siya, legal term yan siya, out of their own will, sila na mismo kusa gagawa. Yan yung meaning ng motto proprio. Motto proprio. Out of their own will, sila na mismo kusa ang gagawa. Mag-initiate, kumbaga. So, the commission out of their own will, 
or upon a verified complaint kapag may nagreklamo, and after due notice and hearing, order the removal of a director or trustee elected despite the disqualification, or whose disqualification arose or is discovered subsequent to an election. So makikita nyo, may kapangyarihan dito yung commission na magtanggal ng director kapag disqualified yung director na kahit disqualified in elect or yung disqualification na discover lang nung after na siyang na-elect. Oh, yun. The removal of a disqualified kasi oh, kasi oh, starting pa lang disqualified na siya. Tapos in-elect or dito sa second instance nalaman lang yung disqualification niya after siyang na-elect. Na the removal of a disqualified director shall be without prejudice to other sanctions that the commission may impose on the board of directors or trustees with knowledge of such disqualification failed to remove such director or trustee. Kapag ano, kasi ano yun sila eh, accessory. Alam pala nilang disqualified yan, tinuloy pala. So dapat, para hindi sila no, para hindi sila masanction ng commission, dapat inosente sila, hindi nila alam na disqualified pala yan. Ito, salient points and remarks. Uh, yung revised corp code, ito na mention natin, the SEC to unilaterally upon a or upon a verified complaint and after due notice ng hearing to remove members of the board of directors or board of trustees who are determined to be disqualified na na-elect. Innovation has no total removal without prejudice, etc. etc. So yan, yan yung nadagdag. Ito, may kapangyarihan na si SEC na magtanggal ng board of director or ng board of trustee. Ito, powers of stockholders or members to remove directors. As you have said kanina, it is a jurisprudence. It is a rule in our country under a legal system that the power to, to appoint uh, that the power to appoint includes the power to remove. Hence, this case, stockholders, members, tatanggalin yung directors or trustees. Generally, removal does not necessarily need a sufficient cause or reason Subject only to the limitation yung minority stockholder yung director nila. F filling of vacancy kahit on the same meeting ng removal, this should does not apply when the removal is initiated by minority stockholder or members nila. May certain rules tayo. Power of court to remove. Nasabi natin, ang SEC may power siyang mag-remove. Ang court pwede? Hindi. Generally. The Corporation Code does not confer expressly upon the courts to remove a director or trustee or any appointed officer of the corporation on the ground of mismanagement of affairs, neglect, and other costs. The power of removal is in the corporation itself na kung saan pwede rin gawin ng Securities and Exchange Commission. Indirectly, the, the court can. Through the appointment of a receiver. Oo, pag nagkaroon ng reklamuhan, nagpuntahan sila sa korte. O, yun, di na kaya ng corporation. Pwede mag-appoint ng receiver yung korte. And yung receiver na yun, sign yung bahala. Grabe powers niyan pagdating sa corporation. Ma, yung mga receiver-receiver na yan sa ano yan, sa insolvency. Yan, dyan yung maririnig yung pangalan ng receiver sa insolvency law. Which is also part of your board exam under RFBT. So, sa mga JPN natin, isama nyo yan sa topics for seminars. Insolvency, general banking laws, insurance, intellectual property. Yan, sama ng sama yung insolvency, bankruptcy. Now, anong mga requisites para makapag-remove ng director or trustee? The removal must take place either at a regular meeting of the corporation or a special meeting called for the purpose. Sa regular meeting, like scheduled na talaga yun eh, kaya nga regular. So, isasama na lang nila sa notice na at this meeting tatanggalin. Siyempre, dapat inform sila, di ba? Or yung special meeting, yung sa secretary, di ba? Either the president or the stockholders holding majority of the ano, stocks of the outstanding capital or the members, majority of the members entitled to vote. Sabihan nila yung secretary, na yung secretary, special meeting, tanggalin tong ano, director or trustee. Pero pag si secretary, or wala tayo, walang secretary, uh, ayaw ni secretary, fails to do so, pwede na mismo yung mga nagreklamo na sila mag-initiate. Mag-special meeting sila, doon nila tanggalin. With or without cause. But take note, may caveat. Uh, director that was elected by, a manor, uh, by the cumulative voting of minority stockholders, di ba? Namensya tayo kanina sa voting-voting. If that director was elected through a cumulative voting 
by the minority stockholders, hindi yan pwede tanggalin without cause. Matatanggal lang yan with cause. Why? You should not deprive the minority stockholders of their representation to the board. Ito, there must be previous notice, stockholders meeting, corporate intention for removal. The removal must be by vote of the stockholders holding or representing two-thirds of the outstanding capital or if the corporation is non-stock, two-thirds ng members. While the director or trustee can be removed from office as provided in this section, he cannot be removed as a stockholder. Di ba? Di siya pwede tanggalin stockholder. Depriving him of his ownership of shares without due process of law. Ito, resignation. Yung trustees, mga directors, pwede sila mag-resign. Karapatan nila yan. Pero may quasi-exception tayo kasi you cannot bar them. Pero you can make them pay if they did something wrong. Mm -hmm. Ano yun? By reason, however, of the fiduciary nature, take note, fiduciary nature is a relationship based on trust. The stockholders, the members trusted the directors, the trustees na papatakbuhin nila na maayos yung corporation of the op of the position they occupy, a director cannot resign as part of fraudulent scheme to prejudice the corporation or its stockholders and make profit to his own advantage or at an unreasonable time if the immediate consequences would be to leave the interest of the corporation without proper care and protection. So kapag, meaning lang yan, or the director quits under circumstances which occasioned a deprivation of profits to the corporation, it is but right that he should repair and make good loss. So, meaning lang yan, hindi pwedeng umalis yung director or trustee kapag may adverse effect, may bad effect sa corporation yung pag-alis niya. Ganun kasimple. Or dito sa baba, if director quits under circumstances which occasion a, dep occasion a deprivation of profits to the corporation, it is but right that he should repair and make such good loss compensation. So, abandonment of office and failure to attend meetings, incompatible office, where a director or trustee in a corporation accepts a position in which his duties are incapa, inco, incompatible with those as such director or trustee, it is presumed that he has abandoned his office as director or trustee of the corporation. So, anong example nito? Alam niyong monitory board ng Central Bank of the Philippines? Monitory board, sila yung namamahala na ng Banko Central. Now, these monitory boards are usually expert yan eh sa financing. So, marami dyan, members siya ng boards ng mga financial institutions, financial corporations like banks. So, like for example, this person, uh, let's say, naging member siya ng ano, naging member siya na, or board sa currently ng isang banko, yeah? boards, uh, member sa currently ng isang banko, kapag na-appoint siya as a member of the monetary board, then automatic hot FN, matik yan tanggal na siya or remove na siya so abandon na siya sa duty niya as a board of director bakit kasi alangan maging board of director pa siya ng banko na yon eh doon na siya sa monetary board conflict of interest na yon kaya incompatible yon sample yon or this one absence for an unreasonable amount length of time similarly where director absented himself from all meetings in the year etc etc okay yan si section 27 ang ano lang yun yung section 27, the power to appoint, carries with it the power to remove. Let's go to section 28, talks about the vacancies. So, pag may natanggal, o ano, remove, remove, etc. May, may mga instances kasi na, okay, na, okay, wala, uh, may, may vacancy sa, ano, position sa board, may vacancy sa position sa trustee. So, let's read section 28. Section 28 provides that Uh, vacancies in the office of director or trustee, emergency board. Any vacancy occurring in the board of director or trustee other than by removal or by expiration of term may be filled by the vote of at least a majority of the remaining directors or trustees if it's still constituting a quorum. Otherwise, said vacancy must be filled by the stockholders or members in a regular or special meeting called for that purpose. Now, as you can see here, sabi dito, any vacancy sa board except lang the removal, by removal, yung previous na natin kanina, tinanggal sila ng board, uh, ng stockholders or ng, ng members, and another exception is the expiration of term. 
pwedeng yung board of directors mismo or trustees, yung mga members nun, the remaining, pwede sila mismo mag-fill ng vacancy na yan. By at least a majority of them. Provided they still constitute a quorum. Okay, reminder lang sa quorum kasi ano, quorum is the minimum requirement number of persons in a meeting para yung mga acts in that meeting will be considered to be valid. Dapat, oh, kasi kailangan may quorum para yung meeting is legal. So pag legal yung meeting, the acts that was constituted in that meeting will be valid. Pagdating din sa corporation code, unless otherwise provided for a higher number, a higher percentage, the quorum will constitute a majority of all. So pag sampu yung board of directors, sampu yung board of trustees, unless otherwise stated, ang quorum dyan is 6. At least 6. Okay, ah? recap lang. So, so uh, pag ito, ito sa, ano yung sabi natin kanina? Other by, ano, except removal and expiration of term, pwede mismo yung remaining boards or remaining members of the board ang mag-fill ng vacancy na yun. Provided, constituting a quorum and at least a majority. Otherwise, said vacancies must be filled by the stockholders or members in a regular meeting or special meeting called for that purpose. So, if hindi, kung they do not constitute Kapag they, the remaining directors or trustees does not constitute a quorum, then the vacancy will be filled by the stockholders or members called for in a regular or special meeting for that purpose. Na sila na lang kasi yung remaining directors or trustees, wala na silang quorum eh. So, hindi, na, hindi sila makaka-elect. Hindi nila ma-fill yung vacancy. So, yung mga stockholders or members na lang. Ngayon, dito tayo sa second paragraph. The second paragraph now talks about this removal an expiration of term which has caused the vacancy. When the vacancy is due to term expiration, kasi di ba, one year, one year lang, For, or three years at rusty, the election shall be held no later than the day of such expiration. So same day daw. Kung, kailan, kung, gen, kung July 1 nag-expire, edi dapat July 1, may na-elect na sila. Uh, uh, at a meeting called for that purpose. When the vacancy arises as a result, of removal by the stockholders or members ito, removal na yung previous section natin the election may be held on the same day of the meeting may ha, tandaan nyo, may may be held on the same day of the meeting authorizing the removal and this fact must be so stated sa agenda and notice of said meeting dapat, nasa agenda nila nasa said meeting Na, okay, on this date, tatanggalin natin tong director na to, pagbobotohan natin yan. Pag natanggal tong director na to on the same day, nasa agenda rin natin na ifi-fill natin yung vacancy na yun on the same day. Yun, agenda and notice of said meeting. In all other cases, the election must be held no later than 45 days. Ano yung all other cases, sir? Like, ang example, ang naging reason ng, ng vacancy is namatay or nag-resign. Yun. Mga other reasons for vacancy. So, pag ganun, other reasons for vacancy, the election must be held no later than 45 days from the time the vacancy arose. A director or trustee elected to fill a vacancy shall be referred to as a replacement director or trustee and shall serve only for the unexpired term of the predecessor in office. Like for example, may 6 months pa yung isang director, kaso namatay siya, so nagkaroon ng vacancy. So, yung papalit sa kanya, will only serve the remaining 6 months kasi 1 year lang man ang term nila, di ba? Uh, shall serve only for the unexpired, unexpired term. So kung 6 months na natitira, si replacement, si pamalik, si, pam, si panakip butas, di, joke lang, si substitute, 6 months na lang. Mm -hmm. Ito. Additional note, additional stipul uh, provisions, however, when the vacancy prevents the remaining directors from constituting a quorum, an emergency action is required to prevent grave. Oo, oo kasi tingnan mo. Uh, di ba tingnan nyo dito? Uh, saan dito? Kailangan di o? O pag failed to constitute a quorum, said, said vacancies, yung stockholders na or yung members in a regular special meeting, sila yung mag-fulfill. Same here. Sila mag -fulfill. Now, ang problema... Kapag magtatawag ka ng regular or special meeting, lalo na kapag malaki yung corporation mo, matagal yan. Oo. 
mag uh, usually notice for special meetings is ano eh, one week for if i remember correctly kasi sa sub- subsequent sections pa natin special meeting one week uh, regular meeting two weeks sa tayo na matagal pa bago maano notice pa lang yun na notice pa lang yun hala ka matagal so what if there's an emergency situation na kailangan ng emergency action na yung board since they don't constitute a quorum ala anything that they do during a board meeting since the board meeting does not constitute a quorum it's a it's an illegal meeting so yung anong sasab gagawin nila doon invalid kasi they don't constitute a quorum nakaw pag karon ng emergency na anong gagawin nila kawawa di ba but Section 28 provides for such contingency. Ano yon? Ito, this paragraph. An emergency action is required to prevent grave, substantial, and irreparable loss or damage to the corporation. Ah, sir, before that, sir, anong magandang example niyan, sir, na mga kailangan ng emergency action? Like, for example, uh, profitable yung company. Hindi siya insolvent, pero hindi siya liquid. Ah, dapat ngayon pa lang, alam niyo yung difference na. Ang insolvent, Uh, hindi sa, um, ang solvent, ibig sabihin, basically, hindi siya bankrupt, mas mataas pa rin yung uh, assets niya compared sa liabilities. Ang insolvent, mas mataas yung liabilities compared sa asset. That is different, insolvency or solvency, the concept of that is different from liquidity. Ang liquidity, ang meaning lang yan, layman's term, uh, uh, hindi mo ma-fulfill yung mga liabilities mo short term as they come in the short term. Big sabi hindi, hindi ka makabayad ng utang in the short term kasi hindi ka liquid, wala kang pambayad. Oh, kasi mara mga items mo hindi mo ma transfer into cash. 'Yun ang hindi liquid. So 'yun. Ah, uh, concept lang 'yun, i-apply natin dito. Like for example, may mga utang kang darating. Eh ang problema, wala kang pambayad kasi hindi ka liquid. Although solvent ka, Mataas yung asset mo sa liabilities mo kasi wala kang pambayad ng utang kasi yung mga assets mo, mga non-current, na mahirap yun silang i-liquidate para pagkuna ng funds sa pambayad sa utang mo. So with that, ang board of directors may kailangan gawin. Kasi papalating na yung utang eh. Kailangan nila magbayad. Eh papano yan? Wala, wala silang magagawa. They don't constitute a quorum. That is an emergency situation requiring emergency action. para to prevent the grave substance and irreparable loss to the corporation. Plano nila, they will bind the corporation refinancing. Oo, refinancing para mabaya para maayos yung yung ano nila, yung pagkautang-utang nila. Na kahit solvent sila, hindi sila liquid. So yun, refinancing or restructuring the debt para makabayad sila properly. Na that will need a resolution from the board na uh, that constitute a quorum para valid act. O, pag ganun yung situation na walang quorum na mahirapan sila mag-refinance. Mahirapan sila mag-reconstruct ng debt. Na that is an emergency situ- situation. O yan, nag-provide lang tayo ng emergency situation. Kailangan nila mag-refinance, kailangan nila mag-restructure ng debt. Now, pa- pag ganun yung emergency situation, may emergency situation, Then they, the board is lacking a quorum. The vacancy may be temporarily filled from among the officers of the corporation. Yung mga officers pwedeng magano. Pwede nilang i-fill temporarily yung vacancy sa board. Yung mga general manager, si pasok nyo, si secretary, si treasurer, si controller, o oh, yun. O si auditor, ipasok nyo. They can temporarily fill the vacancy. of the corporation, of the board, by a unanimous vote of the remaining board directors or trustee. Ngayon, the action by the designated director or trustee shall be limited only to the emergency action necessary. So yan, na-fill na nila yung vacancy, though temporarily. So pwede na silang, or they already now, constitute a quorum. So ngayon, because they constitute a quorum, yung meeting nila magiging legal na. So any action from that meeting, will be valid na kasi legal na yung meeting eh. O oh, yun. That is an emergency situation. But it is the yung action sila ng mga designated directors or trustees 
limited only to emergency action necessary. Sana yun? And the term shall cease within a reasonable time from the termination of the emergency or upon the election of the replacement director or trustee. This is matagalang process yan eh. Whichever comes earlier. Now, the corporation, inotify nila yung SEC within 3 days from the creation of the emergency board, yun yung tawag, stating there in the reason for its creation. Any directorship or trusteeship to be filled by reason of an increase in the number of directors, trustees, ito, another, ano to, another separate concept to. Any director or trusteeship to be filled by reason of an increase in the number of directors or trustees, yan. Amendment yan sa, sa ano, pag nagkaroon ng amendment sa, ano, sa Articles of Incorporation, tinaasan nila yung number of, ano, number of directors, like from 10 to 15, or sa trustees, from 15 to 20. Now, that vacancy shall be filled only by an election at a regular or special meeting of stockholders or members duly called for the purpose or in the same meeting authorizing the increase of directors or trustees if so stated in the notice of the meeting. So, mga stockholders lang, mga members lang ang pwedeng mag-fill ng vacancy na yan. In all election to fill vacancies under this section, the procedure set forth in sections 23 and 25 of this code shall apply. Yung number, yung voting, voting. Yun. So, same voting. So, yan. Yung election of ano? Election of directors and trustees. So, yan. Yan si section 28. Ito, pang ano lang, pang summarize. Ito, summar, sum, pang summary. When the vacancy is due to term expiration, oh natapos yung term na, it shall be held no later than the day of such expiration. At a meeting called for that purpose. When the vacancy arises as a, no, as a result of removal by stockholders members, may be held in the same meeting, auto, uh, meeting authorized. In all, all other cases, 45 days, directorship, take note. Ito, may be held on the same day. Sir, papaano if not held on the same day? Kasi may lang, di ba? Papaano, sir, if not held on the same day? Ano yung maximum days? 45. Hindi siya pwedeng lumampas ng 45. So, if it is not held on the same day, so, if you fill pa yung vac if you fill yung vacancy within 45 days, meeting call for directorship. Mm -hmm. Ito, read, read, read. Okay, let's go to compensation of directors or trustees, section 29. Now, siyempre, kawawa naman, pinatrabaho mo yung directors or trustees. So, bigyan mo naman ng sweldo yan. Pero anong rules in regards to that? Section 29 provides for that. So, compensation of directors or trustees. In the absence of any provisions in the bylaws ng uh, in the bylaws fixing their compensation, the director or trustees shall not receive any compensation in their capacity as such except for reasonable per diems. Ano mini ng per diem, sir? Parang allowance yan. Oo, reasonable allowances yan yung idea ng per diems. So, kapag hindi stated sa corporation sa bylaws, walang compensation ang Hindi makakareceive ng compensation si directors or trustees except reasonable allowances per diems. Now, provided however, na yung mga stockholders representing at least a majority of the outstanding capital stock or majority of the members, pwede sila mismo mag-grant sa directors or trustees ng compensation and approve the amount thereof at a regular or special meeting. So yan, kahit hindi fix sa bylaw yung compensation ng, trust, ng directors or trustees natin, Yung mga stockholders mismo or yung mga members, pwede sila mag-grant ng compensation kahit hindi fixed or stated sa bylaws. Ngayon, papaano if meron na silang compensation? Granted na, gaano kataas? May limitations tayo. In no case shall the total yearly compensation of directors exceeds 10% of the net income before income tax of the corporation. So, dapat dito, during the preceding year. So, dapat nila nalampas ng 10%. Total, ha? Total yearly for all directors. For all directors, total shall not exceed 10% of the net income ng corporation. Of the income, net income before income tax. 
I thought directors or trustees shall not participate in the determination of their own per diems or compensation. Dati, they can participate. Ngayon, expressly bawal na. Com corporation vested with public interest shall submit to their shareholders, shareholders and the commission an annual report of the total compensation of their directors or trustees. Ito, okay, salient points, 10%, provides not part, vested public interest, innovation shall not participate. Okay, let's go to article uh, section 30, provides for the liability ng directors, trustees, or ng officers. Now, directors or trustees who willfully and knowingly vote or assent to patently unlawful acts of the corporation or who are guilty of gross negligence or bad faith in directing the affairs of the corporation or acquire any personal or pecuniary interest in conflict with their duty as such directors or trustees shall be liable jointly and severally. So, solidary obligation yan. Tandaan nyo pa ang solidary obligation. Each debtor is liable for the entire obligation while each creditor is entitled to the entire obligation. Solidary yun, ha? Kasi yung joint obligation, ano lang nila, kung ano yung share nila, yun lang sila. Pero pagdating solidarily, solidary obligation, entire. They are liable for the entire. Ito, ito yung wording, tanda nyo, joint line severally, solidary obligation yan. Oo, naloko ko dati nito sa, ano, sa college. Kala ko itong... Jointly and severally, joint obligation. Kasi nandito yung word na jointly eh. So, kala ka joint obligation to. Yun pala, solidary obligation yan. Ang wording ng jointly and severally. Now, for all damages resulting therefrom suffered by the corporation, its stockholder or members and other persons. A director or trustee or officer shall not attempt to acquire or acquire any interest adverse to the corporation in respect to any matter which has been refused in them in confidence and upon which equity imposes a disability upon themselves to deal in their own behalf. Otherwise, the director or trustee shall be liable as trustees for corporation must account for profits which otherwise would have accrued to the corporation. So, ito wala tong changes. Compare, uh, wala tong changes from old code and new code. Same lang. Itong section na to. So, ito, nature of director's trustee's position. Basically, kung babasahin nyo ito, it is fiduciary duty of the director or trustee. Uh, fiduciary, ulitin natin, ilang beses natin itong dinifyin in this entire video, fiduciary is a relationship based on trust. So, because the director's or trustees were trusted to control the corporation, to manage the corporation, eh, siyempre, huwag nilang gaguhin. Yun lang yung meaning ng entire entire slide na to. Huwag nilang gaguhin yung kanilang fiduciary duty. Cases when directors or trustees or officers liable for damages. Ito, mga kailan sila naging liable. Yung general rule natin, ito na mention natin to kanina, officers of the corporation are not personal, are not personally liable for their official acts unless it is shown that they exceeded their authority, ultra vires. This section enumerates the occasions when a director or trustee may be held liable for damages and thus the veil of corporate fiction. Ito na mention natin kanina, di ba? The veil of corporate fiction may be pierced. Na kung saan, kung sino man yung director or trustee o yung officer na nag-commit na liable for damages. Hindi corporation ang habulin. Hindi titingnan yung separate juridical entity ng corporation. They will pierce that veil of corporate fiction. Tatargetin sino yung mga liable. Hindi corporation yung tatarget. Kasi, in the, in the click up lang to, ah, in the, the doctrine of piercing the corporate veil, ginamit yung corporation, yung separate juridical entity nito, to do a wrongdoing, to commit wrongdoing. Na, pag ganun kasi nangyari, Corporation yung hahabulin kasi may separate juridical entity siya. Hindi kung sino yung behind that, such as the director, trustees, or the officers. Now, the doctrine of uh, facing the corporate will states that kapag ganun yung nangyari, edi, hindi titingnan yung separate juridical personality ng corporation. E siya pwera yun. Tatargetin kung sino yung behind that wrongdoing, which is the director, trustees, or the officers. 
That is why piercing up, piercing the corporate veil. Hindi titingnan yung separate juridical personality ng corporation. Tatargetin nyo sino yung nag-commit ng wrongdoing. Okay, recap lang yan ng piercing of corporate fiction of bail. The bail of corporate fiction. So, he will fully nor knowingly vote or assents to patently unlawful acts of the corporation, guilty gross negligence, not mere want of ordinary prudence, as you know, bad faith directing, of course, personal pecuniary interest, conflict of interest to, Now, in above instances, the erring board members or officers shall be held jointly and severally or solidarily liable, as you have said, to all damages resulting therefrom suffered by the corporation, stockholder, or other person. So, pag naglokoloko ka, ale, piercing corporate bail, of, uh, piercing the bail of corporate existence ka. Ito naman, for secret profits, basa niya lang. Okay, so let's continue. Ah, nagilamos ako ng mukha para magising-gising rin ako. So, last four sections of Title 3. Ngayon, Section 31. Section 31 talks about dealings of director, trustees, or officers. Take note, with the corporation. Meaning, it is a transaction involving the corporation and the director and the trustee or the uh, or the trustee or the officer so transaction between them so pag ganun yung situation ano yung governing rule section 31 a contract of a corporation with one or more of its director trustees or officers or their spouses and relatives within the fourth civil degree of consanguinity or affinity is voidable tanda nyo Voidable. Ibig sabihin, it can be ratified later on. Hindi sa void, but voidable. At the option of such corporation. Unless, all of the following are present. The presence of a director or trust in the board meeting in which the contract was approved was not necessary to constitute a quorum for such meeting. So, ibig sabihin, 10 directors Ah, uh, seven sila sa meeting. Yung isa doon is the dealing director. So, kahit na wala siya doon, may quorum pa rin kasi seven sila, isa sa doon, tanggalin siya, may six pa rin out of ten. So, may quorum pa rin. So, not necessary to constitute, his presence is not necessary para sa mag-constitute ng quorum sa meeting. Pangalawa, the vote of such directors or ano, trustee was not necessary for the approval. Same concept. And the contract is fair and reasonable naman, reasonable under the circumstances. Yung pangapat na condition is that in case a corporation is vested with public interest, material contracts are approved by at least two-thirds of the entire membership the board. Of the entire membership ah, of the board. So kapag ano yan, Kapag, let's, uh, tag dito, 12 yan sila sa board. So, two-thirds. Tama na? Eight, at least. Mm -hmm. With at least a majority of the independent directors voting to approve the material contract. And lastly, in case of an officer, the contract has been previously authorized by the board, by the board of directors. So, pag present naman itong mga conditions sa to, goods naman yan. Ngayon, ito. Additional note, where any of the first three conditions set forth in the preceding paragraph, ito, silang tatlo. Yung not necessary to, his presence is not necessary to constitute the quorum, his vote is not necessary to approve the contract, and the contract is fair or reasonable. If those are absent, uh, in the case, in the case of a contract with a director or trustee, such contract may be ratified by the vote of stockholders representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital or at least two-thirds ng members sa isang non-stock corporation in a meeting called for that pur for the purpose, so special meeting to. Provided that full disclosure of the adverse interest of the director or trustees involved is made at such meeting and the contract is fair or reasonable. Kasi, pag hindi to present, 
Ibig sabihin, voidable na voidable yan siya. Voidable yan siya. Pero pag present to sila, goods yung contract. Hindi voidable, valid. Pero pag may absent dito, kasi all the following conditions, all. So pag may absent yan, voidable. Okay, gets? Ngayon, kapag dito sa second, sa, dito, sabi dito sa second paragraph, kapag yung first three conditions daw yung absent, na, chicken voidable talaga yan. Alam, isang absent pa lang, voidable na. Paano pa kaya pag tatlo? So, in this case daw, kapag tatlo yung absent, it can be ratified. Where any of the first three. O? Oh? O oh, any. So, ibig sabihin, either sa kanila. Okay? O, oh, any. Oh. Take word, any. So, either sa kanila. So, kung si A, wala. Voidable. Maratify. Si B, wala. Voidable. Maratify. Si C, wala. Voidable. Maratify. Si D, ah, ibang issue na to. Bakit? Kasi public, ano to eh, corporation vested with public interest na yan eh. So required talaga yan. Kung kailangan na yung material contracts approved by at least two-thirds. So hindi yan pwede mawala. Ito naman, when an officer is not authorized by the board of directors, then hindi yun binding. Yeah? Or, uh, or in a subsequent meeting, pwede nila yan i-ratify. But in this case, ito yung pinag-usapan. So, sabi dito sa, sa second paragraph, when any of the three is not present, then pwede siyang maratify in a meeting specially called for that purpose ng at least two-thirds ng outstanding capital or two-thirds ng uh, members. Uh, full disclosure, adverse effect, and will. Uh, okay. Ito, salient points. Now covers fourth degree of consanguinity in determining voidable contract dealing of corporation with directors or trustees. Sir, ah, nag na ba kayo? Nag-estate taxation na ba kayo? Ah, oh, nag-estate taxation na kayo eh. Mm -mm, kasi, hindi, sa transfer taxation yan eh. Business and transfer tax yan eh. Hindi yan income tax. So, I guess may idea na ba kayo kung anong itsura ng consanguinity? Kasi, uh, baka na-exempt pa kayo mag -ane. Estate tax, uh, transfer tax. Kasi ang transfer tax, nandyan yung estate tax. Eh, nandyan din yung concept ng consanguinity. So, ganito ang itsura ng consanguinity. Gagawa kayo basically ng puno. Ikaw to? Ikaw? Lagi ko lang ikaw. Tapos ito, pababa, descendant mo, kapatid mo. Ganito yung itsura niyan, or gusto nyo search na sa internet, pero ganito yung itsura niyan. Kapatid mo itong nasa side, then anak nila. Then nanay-tatay mo. Parents. Then ito, anak nila, oh. Basta ganyan yung itsura niyan. Then grandparents mo nandito sa taas. Then kapatid ng, parent, ng parents mo. Then may sarili lang silang anak. Which is your pinsans. Then ito kapatid ng lolo-lolo mo. So yung fourth degree of consanguinity. Ang bilangan dyan. Ganito yung itsura. Ang bilangan dyan. Ito, ito mga kapatid mo Disregard natin tong isa. Sa, sa, natin, eh? sa, sa ano ito? Sa estate tax nyo to. Oo, sa estate tax nyo to. Galing natin to. Sa, sa transfer tax under estate tax. So, ito kapatid mo to sila. Uh, ito kapatid mo. Ito mga pinsan mo kasi kapatid ng parents mo to. Itong dalawa. So, itong sa baba, pinsan mo. Itong dalawa sa side do, kasi parents mo to, at connect kayo, magkakapatid kayo. So, ang fourth degree of consanguinity, ang bilangan dyan is ganito. One, two, three. Ganun ang bilangan. So, itong mga pinsan mo, may anak pa yun sila. O, sabihin natin may anak ko sila. O, itong kapatid mo, may anak rin, sabihin natin. So, ang bilangan dyan sa fourth degree of consanguinity, starting sa'yo, 1, 2, 3, 4. O, yan yung fourth degree consanguinity. 
pamangkin mo, second cousin, ah, second cousin, second niece. Yan yung bilangan sa fourth degree. Bilang 1, 2, 3, 4. If I can still remember correctly, ah, baka mali ako dito. Pero ganito yung pagkakalala ko. So, within that, sabi dito, within that, bawal, or kailangan, within that, fourth degree of consanguinity or affinity. Ang affinity class, ha, uh, ano to, by civil, ibig sabihin, brother-in-law, mga ganun, ang consanguinity by blood. Ang affinity by civil lang. By paper, kumbaga. So, pag within that degree, it will fall under section 31. Okay? So, yan. Ikaw to, si I. So, one, parents mo. Two, kapatid nila. Tito mo. Three, uh, anak nila. Which is your first cousin. And, tang, four, pag ano nila. So, within that fourth degree of consanguinity, will fall under Uh, 40 degree of will fall under section 31. So, oh, yun. Pag lumampas na, like, asa ah, ganun nila, oh, yun. Wow. Kaya lang, additional note lang. To 40 degree of consanguinity or affinity, spouse, oh, their spouses and their relatives, meron pa yan. Ikaw, eto, family team mo pa lang to, idadamay mo pa yung sa spouse mo. O, pasok ng spouse mo, one, two, three, oh, yun. Affinity yun. Relatives ng spouse mo. Balik to dealing selector to ratification to ter approval. So yan, madali lang naman ng ano. Ang section 31. So let's go to section 30. Ah, okay, ratification. So let's go to section 32. Additional note lang to, baka mali yung pagkakalala ko. Pero pag ganito gay talaga pag ano ko. Understanding ko doon sa degree degree. So sana ako section 32. Section 32 provides for contracts between corporations with interlocking directors. Meaning ng interlocking directors, si Corporation 1, si Corporation 2, meron silang director na uh, merong, I mean, tawag ito, si, si director, uh, di ba, walang, unless otherwise provided sa bylaws, so, ang isang director, pwede maging director ng one uh, ng one or more corporations unless otherwise provided sa bylaws ng mga corporations na yon. So, with that, pwede siya maging director dito, pwede siya maging director in another corporation. Ang tawag doon, interlocking directors. Now, contact between corporations with interlocking directors. Ibig sabihin, in both those corporations, meron silang mga directors na director for both corporations. Yan lang yan. Now, except in cases of fraud and provided the contract is fair and reasonable, Under the circumstances, a contract between two or more corporations having interlocking director shall not be invalidated on that ground alone. As long as fair and reasonable siya under the circumstances. And there's no fraud. So, hindi yan may invalidate on that ground alone. Now, provided kapag that in the interest of the interlocking director in one corporation is substantial, and the interest in another corp in the other corporation is ano or corporations is merely nominal then the contract shall be subject to the provisions of the preceding section in so far as the latter corporation or corporations are concerned yung nominal anong preceding section ito will be subject to this so kapag may interlocking tapos yung interlocking na yon Uh, does not fall under this first sentence na fair and reasonable and both nominal or both substantial for the for both corporations uh, goods lang as long as walang fraud pero kapag nagkaroon na ng instance na sa isang corporation substantial on the other nominal lang yung effect ng transaction Then, papasok na yun dito sa section 31 yung governing rule niya. I-check na yan. O kung ano, ratify, ratify, etc., etc. Now, paano malaman kung substantial ba yung interest? Ito, provided stock holdings exceeding 20% of the outstanding capital stock shall be considered substantial for purposes of interlocking directors. So, kung 20% daw, yung ano, 
Okay? Ito yung center locking director on one corporation, 20% or more yung kanyang interest, then that is substantial. Oh, 20 per, oh, exceeding 20%. That is substantial interest. So, it will papasok ngayon sa section 32. Ito illustration para mas madali. Si X Corporation sold a parcel of land with a uh, land worth of 500,000 to Y Corporation for only 300,000. Si Z is a board member of board, both corporations, kay X and kay Y. Now, evidently, the contract is not fair and reasonable considering na 500 yan, tapos 300 lang binenta. Ah, ba, ko. So, therefore, it is voidable on that ground. Oh, kasi, hmm, invalidated. However, if the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances and this interest in corporation, in X corporation is merely nominal and in Y corporation substantial, then the conditions in section 32 must be present insofar as X is concerned. On the theory that the contract of X is uh, of X corporation is with Z. Kasi substantial yung ano niya eh, ownership kay Z. Ah, tag ito. Substantial yung ownership niya kay Z. Kaya, since substantial yung ownership ni Z kay X, I mean pala, matatrato na yung, uh, mas maganda yung drawing eh. Saan dito? Oh, substantial. Saan yun? Pwede so far as concerned. On the T dito. Saan yun? Kay Y siya, substantial. So, ibig sabihin, sabihin natin itong si Y. Okay? Ito si Y. Si Y ito. Ito naman si X. Ngayon, sabi dito, okay, para mas maintindihan nyo yung connection ni section 31 kay 32. Kasi ba diba sabi dito, will apply. Oh, sabi subject to the provisions of the preceding section. Ganito yan ha, para mas, mas, mas maintindihan nyo. Ang sabi dito, si X, uh, I mean, nahilo na ako sa letter, si Z, yung director of both Y and X, yung interest niya kay Corporation Y is substantial. So, ibig sabihin, substantial yung portion ni Zizan kay Y. Itong si Z and si X, nag, ano yan, oh, nag, nag-transaction sila sa dalawa. Ngayon, ang pinapoint out ni Section 32, kapag substantial sa isa, sa isang corporation, nominal naman, Nominal lang, yung ownership ni Z kay X. Kapag ganyan yung situation, as if, etong si X, corporation, nakikipag-negotiate, nakikipag-transact kay Z. Kung saan substantial yung kanyang ownership, yung kanyang interest kay Y corporation. Okay, gets? So, pag ganyan yung situation, ang sabi dito, as if X corporation is transacting with Z. Even though, in form, si Y yung kanyang katransaksyon, si Y Corporation. But since Z, the director, has a substantial interest kay Y Corporation, it is as if etong si X is transacting with Z. So if that's the case, it will fall under Section 31 because Section 31 provides for the dealings of directors, trustees, or officers with the corporation. So, if that's the case, sabi dito, if on one corporation, substantial ang ownership ng director, on the other, it is not, it is nominal, then Section 31 will govern that para malaman kung voidable ba yan, may presence ba yan, substitute, substitute, ratify, ratify. Diyan na papasok si Section 31, yan yung relationship niya kay Section 32. Okay, understand. Okay, that is that that instance is only present kapag substantial sa isang corporation, nominal naman sa isa. Ngayon, if the case is this one, to. Na si Z, yung director, yung interest niya in both corporations is nominal, both ha or dito na para mas klaro yung araw-araw natin. Or both substantial Then the provisions of Section 32 do not apply, but the contract shall be valid if there is no fraud and the contract is fair and reasonable under the circumstances. 
the corporation which seeks to uphold the contract has the burden to show that it is fair and reasonable. So, nagigess yung section 32. May dalawang instance tayo kay section 32. The first instance is this one. Ulitin lang natin para klaro. The first e instance is this one. Na kapag yung contract, na kapag yung contract is, ano, is fair and reasonable, walang fraud, the contract between two corporations na may interlocking directors, ibig sabihin may same directors on some, then, it is valid. Walang problema na both is nominal or both is substantial. Walang problema. Valid yan. No, no, no fraud, fair and reasonable. Yun yung first instance. Yun yung first case. The second case that Section 32 talks about is kapag ang nangyari sa isang corporation, yung uh, yung atawag ito, yung interest ni interlocking director is substantial. Sa isang corporation naman is nominal. Like in this case, papasok na i-apply si Section 31. Bakit? Kasi kapag substantial nominal, like in this case, si Z may substantial interest kay Y, si X may ma, uh, kay X Corporation, si Z, may nominal interest lang. If that's the case, it is as if that X is transacting with Z. Even though in paper, yung katransaction niya talaga is si Y Corporation. In substance kasi, si Z yung katransaction niya, considering na si Z may substantial interest kay Y Corporation. So, if that's the case, it is as if that X Corporation is dealing with a director, a trustee, or an officer. A director or trustee. Kasi ownership yan eh. A director lang pala. Oo. Kasi oh, it is a director having a transaction with the corporation. Dealing with the corporation. Kaya, kapag ganun yung instance, i-apply si Section 31. So, I hope naintindihan nyo yung concept na yun. So, let's go. Ito, validity. Uh, basahin nyo lang. Validity of bylaws, prohibiting interlocking, etc., etc. Ito, punta tayo sa Section 30, disloyalty of a director. Oo. Parang shota mo, disloyal sa'yo. So, Section 30 provides for the disloyalty of a director. Kung saan, where a director, by virtue of such office, acquires a business opportunity which should belong to the corporation, thereby obtaining profits to the prejudice of such corporation, the director must account for and refund. Diba? Familiar yung concept na to, diba? Balikan nyo yung uh, uh, accounting for uh, accounting. Yung partnerships natin, diba? Disloyalty of a partner na dapat sa na dapat sa partnership na punta pero kinuha niya yung opportunity. Uh, same concept yun dito. Where the director by virtue of such office acquires a business opportunity which should belong to the corporation thereby obtaining profits to the prejudice of such corporation. The director must account for and refund to the latter all such profit unless the act has been ratified by a vote of the Stockholders owning or representing at least two-thirds of the outstanding capital. This provision shall be applicable not with, notwithstanding the fact that the director risks one's own fund in the venture. Tiyatawag dito, Doctrine of Corporate Opportunity. Under this doctrine, a director by virtue of his office acquires for himself a business opportunity which should belong to the corporation, thereby obtaining profits the produce such, therefore account later, for such profit refunding the same, notwithstanding that he raised his fund in the venture. So yan, ni-repeat lang. Tawag dito, doctrine of corporate opportunity. Let's say for example, director ka sa isang construction company, di ba? Uh, but also, tawag dito, uh, ano maganda ang tawag doon? Uh, at the same time, meron kang small business na nagko-construct. Nag, oh, ano sa nagko-construct? Nagpo-provide ng ano? O, oh, nagko-construct rin. Small business mo lang. May mga tauhan ka. But at the same time, 
ano ka rin, ah, huwag na lang construction company. Nagsusupply ng construction materials yun. Like for example, director ka, whole sim, yun. Director ka ng whole sim, nagsusupply din sila ng construction materials. But on the same time, meron ka small business, construction hardware. Kung saan, sa business mo na yun, nagkukonstruct ka rin ng hardware store nga eh, di ba? Ngayon, being the director of whole sim, nalaman mo na na, uy, meron pala itong company na gustong bumili ng ano, construction materials sa whole sim, nakikipag-negotiate. Now, instead of that uh, transaction going to ano, going to whole sim, inisnatch mo, sabi mo doon sa ano, gustong bumili. Uy, bili ka na lang dito sa akin. Sige na, nagsusupply rin ako. Ito, discount para sa'yo. Ito, special offer. Yun, inisnatch mo yung opportunity na para sana kay whole sim, para mag-supply ng construction material, yun is snatch mo. So, that is a lost profit for whole sim. So, because of that, yung na-obtain mong profit dyan, that prejudice the, that prejudice the corporation. That is a sign of disloyalty. And therefore, you need to account for that and refund that lost profit to whole sim. Inagawan mo ng opportunity eh, director ka, inabuso mo yung pagiging director mo. Nung nalaman mo may negotiation pala, inisnatch mo. Yun. However, there are instances where the doctrine is not applied. Okay, like ito. Uh, the doctrine which is but one phase of the rule of undivided loyalty on the part of the corporate fiduciaries does not preclude the director from engaging in a distinct enterprise of the same general class of a business that which engages in so long as it acted in good faith. So kahit na same line of business yan, As long as the director is acting in good faith, goods. Neither is the doctrine applicable where the opportunity is one which not essential to corporate business. Hindi essential, ah. hindi, mga, mga hindi connected. Like for example, nagko-construct nga, nagsusupply nga ng construction materials si whole sim. Pero hindi siya nagko-construct, ah, nagsusupply ng ano, ng, ng mga bato, mga boulders. Hindi siya nag, nagsusupply. Pero ikaw, A director who has a separate business supplying construction material, nagsusupply ka ng boulders. So that is, an, is not a lost opportunity for Holsim. Kasi at the first place, si Holsim hindi nagsusupply ng boulders. Ikaw, on your own separate business, nagsusupply. So goods pa rin yun. Kasi that is not a lost opportunity for Holsim. Not essential. The, this property or business opportunity ceases to be corporate opportunity. and transform into a personal opportunity where the corporation is definitely longer able to avail itself of the opportunity. Ano maganda ang example niyan? Like sex ah. May gustong bumili kay Holsim. Ito example for number T. May gustong bumili kay Holsim ng buhangin para sa construction. Kaso itong si Holsim, walang may provide kasi nabenta niya na. Wala na siyang stock. Pero ikaw, meron kang stock on your own personal business Construct, uh, supplying construction material, hardware. So, yung corporate opportunity, naging personal opportunity na. Kasi si Whole Sim, hindi niya masupply. Pero yung business mo, masupply. So, yun, walang, uh, walang loss opportunity kay Whole Sim kasi hindi niya naman kaya itupad yung ano. Hindi niya kaya i-accept yung opportunity na yun kasi wala sang stock. So, naging personal opportunity mo na yun, so wala kang kasalanan. Hindi mo malalabag yung Doctrine of corporate opportunity. Kasi at the first place, wala ng corporate opportunity kasi hindi ma, hindi makuha ni, uh, hindi yung masatisfy ni whole sim yung contract na yun. Kasi wala siya ng supply eh. Ikaw may supply ka. Oh, that becomes a personal opportunity. So, hindi mo nalabag yung doctrine of corporate opportunity. Ito, ratifications by stockholders of this lawyer act. Now, under section 32, the guilty director will only be exempt from liability to the corporation to account for the profits he realized if his disloyal act is ratified. Ibig sabihin, basically, pinatawad siya ng at least two-thirds ng outstanding capital. There's no similar provision in Section 30. Now, si Section 33 is silent on whether the disloyal director shall be allowed to vote his shares in ratification of his act. Oo, silent eh. And the funny thing about that, is kapag itong si guilty director, siya pala yung majority owner. Alal, Diyos ko. Ah, majority owner. 
a two-thirds owner. Haha, <laughs> funny. Oh, pero silent si Section 33 dyan. So, yun lang yung... So, we will go to, ito, basahin nyo na lang. Na, nakabigay naman tayo ng examples dito, basahin nyo na lang to. Let's go to the last section, Section 34. Now, Section 34 provides for executive management and other special committees. Now, ito dati, executive committees lang to. Pero ngayon, dinagdaga na, management and other special. So, Section 34 provides that if the bylaws so provides... The board may create an executive committee composed of at least three directors. Mm -hmm. It is a committee within the board, ha? So, example, if may sampung board director members, they can form uh, an executive committee of at least three members, three board members. Said committee may act by majority vote of all of its member, the committee, ha? On such specific matters within the competence of the board, as may be delegated to it in the bylaws or by majority vote of the board except with respect to the following so yan no ang isang executive committee para siyang board of directors na a more compact sa a more compact smaller size of board of directors na kung saan generally it can do the acts of the board of directors as provided by the bylaws at this was delegated by the bylaws. Oo, para siyang maliit na board of directors. Maliit na board of directors. Tawag lang sa kanya, executive committee. Ngayon, generally, yes, he can, ano, he can perform the acts of the board. Pero may mga certain exceptions in relation to that, which is as follows. Approval of any action for which shareholders approval is required, of course. F uh, filing, a uh, filing, feeling of vacancies in the board. Diba, kanina sabi natin, uh, pwedeng mag-fill ng vacancy in some circumstances yung remaining directors, remaining trustees, as long as they still constitute a quorum. In this case, the executive committee, yung smaller size, hindi sila pwede. Dapat the entire board, the remaining the remaining ones. The amendment or repeal of the bylaws, or the, <coughs> or the adoption of bylaws, of the new bylaws, Amendment or repeal of any resolution. Ito, tandaan nyo itong mga ano. Oo, oh, lumalabas yung board exam. Ano mga pwedeng gawin, ano mga hindi pwedeng gawin ng ano? Ng executive committee. Amendment or repeal of any resolution of the board, which is ex in express term, is not amendable or repealable. And distribution of cash dividends in the shareholders. The board of directors may create special committees of temporary permanent nature and determine the term, member's term, composition, compensation, and power, uh, powers and responsibilities. So, apart from executive committee, pwede rin mag-create ng board of directors other special committee. Salient point, section 32, broaden the executive committee to include management and other special committee. The board na may power, special committee. Sir, anong example na nga na, sir? Na ma special committee na pwede nyo mag-create? Audit committee. Oo, within the board, of directors, uh, magkikreate sila ng audit committee. Now, the audit committee is the governing body when it comes to the internal auditing system ng isang company. Siya yung mag-oversee. Oh, internal audit. Yung audit committee, kasi may tinatawag tayong internal auditor. Eh. Yung internal auditor, siya yung nag-aasikaso kung yung yung uh, siya yung nag-aasikaso sa internal audit ng isang corporation. And itong si internal auditor, sumasagot siya sa audit committee. Oo. Si audit committee, nag-oversee lang yan siya. Si, sa ginagawa sa internal audit system ng corporation. Yung nag-check talaga si internal auditor. So, yan. Additional notes lang. That is a special committee. Audit committee. So, executive committee. Uh, need for need for an executive committee, bakit kailangan? The board of directors delegates to the executive composed of some members for, para sa speedy action. Yan lang. Speedy action and solution to important matters matters without the need for a board meeting. Kasi ang executive committee, small group of people lang yan, smaller than the board. So, since konti lang yung taong kailangan, may speedy action sila. Hindi na kailangan i-gather pa lahat ng board. Especially where such meeting cannot readily be held. 
Thus, the committee directly manages the operation of cooperation between meetings of the board, etc., etc. Express provisions sa bylaw. Yung executive committee must be provided sa bylaws and composed of at least or not less than three members. The board cannot create or appoint an executive committee to perform kasi kailangan provided talaga sa bylaws. Committee contemplated. It is as powerful as the board it, as it is actually performing certain duties of the board and in effect, is acting as a board itself. Gaya na sabi natin kanina. Matter accepted, matters accepted from delegations, the board cannot validly delegate to the executive committee blanket or general authority to act for the board if the delegation constitutes in effect an abdication of corporate powers, etc. Enlargement of board directors, basahin nyo lang, authority function, membership, ultimate control by the board, quorum and voting. So yan. Yan yung title for natin for the Revised Corporation Code of the Philippines. So, yun, natapos natin. Eh, medyo gabi na. So, before natin to end yung video, may announcement ako. So, basically, in-schedule ko na yung, ano ko, ah, uh, yung remaining days ko, char, remaining days pa mamatay. Ah, uh, hindi natin, mat, uh, hindi ko magagawa yung long exam natin sa December 18. Mm -hmm. Kasi may mga mga commitments ako kailangan gawin. So, wala akong time para gawin yung exam. So, with that, yung long exam natin, yung long quiz natin will be on January 4 kung kailan babalik kayo sa klase. Na sir! Na sir! So, the only consol consolation na pwede ko maibigay is I will double the time ng inyong pag-take sa long quiz. Originally, ang inisip ko 3 hours lang kung sa 18 natin iti-take. Pero since sa ano na, as a consolation, gagawin kong 6 hours or well, let's say 8 hours na lang yung time nyo to take the exam. Okay, goods na yun. The second announcement is the oh, January 4 ha, exam nyo. The second announcement would be uh, di ba, sinabi ko sa inyo, gagawa kayo ng corporation. Di ba? Okay, by tomorrow or by this weekend, I will be posting the ano, the sa Google Classroom natin, yung submission for that Article uh, for that creation of corporation. Uh, oh, di ba? Mga necessary documents like uh, uh, recommendations from the uh, from the related agencies, yung Article of Corporation, etc., etc. So, yung deadline natin dyan, before the final exam. Before the final exam. Oy, last time ko pa kayo sinabi yan, ha, na mag prepare na kayo ng ano, Articles of Incorporation nyo. Since, ng pag-create nyo ng corporation, last time ko pa yung sinabi yan. And since, natapos naman natin i-discuss yung incorporation, which is basically, after that, makaka-create na kayo. Yun pala eh. Makaka-create na kayo. Ah, uh, tawag dito? Maka Kasi yun lang man yung relevant eh. When it comes to creation of the corporation. Ganyan yun sa amin dati. After nung discussion namin, pinakreate na kami ng corporation, Kasi nandun naman yung relevant topics when it comes to creating a corporation eh, sa Title 2. Uh, tawag dito. Yun. Before the final exam yung submission, deadline of submission. Ang final exam nyo will be on January 22, Friday. So, before the final exam, submit nyo na. Okay? Kasi kailangan marilis agad yung grades eh. Ayon natin, Sally. Ah, uh, January 22. Wait, January 22. January 22. Ah, uh, January 22. Kasi kailangan na ganda yung submission ng grade. Kasi one week lang yung enrollment eh. Tapos klase agad. So, in relation to that, January 20 ang deadline. Oh, mahababa na yun. More than one month. So, sa amin nga dati, less than one month pa inipas. So, yun. Tapos, sulat-sulat pa yun. Handwritten yun. Yun, stress talaga yun. Handwritten. Ginandaan ko talaga writing ko doon. So, yun ha. Okay, to announcement. Repeat lang natin yung announcement. Uh, January 8, uh, <coughs> hindi, uh, move yung long exam nyo from December 18 to January 4. Consolation, gagawin kong 8 hours from the original 3 hours yung pag-take nyo ng exam. Long exam ha, long quiz. Uh, then, another long quiz kayo meron. Last Friday, before the midterm final exam week, Okay? Last Friday. 
So, may tulong quizzes kayo for this uh, for this ano, second quarter. Na yung coverage ng first long exam nyo, will, uh, ng long exam nyo sa January 4, will be from Title 1 to Title 5. Okay? Yung sa second long exam, the subsequent one, will be the remaining titles and the introduction of the co cooperatives. Okay. Then yung second, ano natin, second announcement natin would be the deadline for the submission of the creation of a corporation requirement would be on January 20. Okay, final na yun, January 20. Hindi na yan pwede ma-move. Sagad na talaga yun. Bakit? Kasi the week after the final exam would be the enrollment week. So, dapat may grades na kayo by that time. Kasi after ng enrollment week, the next week, a chicken klase na for the second semester. So, hindi yan pwede ma-delay. So, gawin nyo na. Ngayon pa lang. So, with that, yun ang announcement natin. If any questions, may questions kayo, don't hesitate to chat sa GC natin. Okay? So, bye-bye. Love you. Good night. Sweet queen.